And I feel honored to say, my fellow South Africans, we did it, South Africa. Yes, we won the Rugby oh. World Cup back to back and four time champions. That was unbelievable. I think all of us have a story about where we were in 2019 when we won the World Cup, where we were in 2023 when we won the World Cup. And these are going to be stories we're going to be retelling for years to come. And a big congratulations to the Springboks. They were incredible. They had me biting my nails. They had us on the edge of our seats, winning with only one point. Congratulations to the opposition team, New Zealand, for also doing really, really well pushing through with only 14 men on the field. But listen, we have so much to unpack and we're going to connect with sports reporter Jeremy Harris, who's currently still in France, probably having the best time there to find out firsthand what his experience was like in France. And then we want to keep the spotlight on the sporting champions because South Africa trumped Pakistan in the Cricket World Cup with one wicket. Yeah. And we have a yes for the cricket fans out there too. And we have former Proteus player Paul Adams joining us in studio for all of the fours and sixes. And then furthermore, entertaining us today, we need some entertainment for your Monday. We have the one and only Richard Sturton, and we have this and a whole lot of fun for you, so stay tuned. It's going to be a jam-packed show. This is the closest I'm going to get to wearing gold today, but there is someone wearing green in studio. Good morning, G-Man. I'm all green. I'm green everywhere today. It is incredible. I am spent. Well done, Springboks. Well done, South Africa. It felt like a collective effort. But we cannot forget what these guys have put themselves through for all of us. Congratulations, South Africa. I think those of us can remember when we were there in 2007 and where we were in 1995. We understand how momentous this moment is from a sporting perspective, but also for the country. So let us know how you're doing. Are you still okay? Where were you? What was the best part? What were the highlights? What was your moment like when the Springboks achieved something truly special? We always go on about being that one inch, making all the difference in the game. That one point made all the difference yet again. They put us through the most, but we are behind them 100% because we know what this means. Share your voice notes of celebration with us. 063-408-8863. How you doing, South Africa? We are the world champion. So yes, I've got a few sporting highlights to go through as we delve into the news. Yes, we're going to talk about cricket. We're going to talk about amazing opportunities in sports. And we will, of course, talk about the rugby. But right now, let's see how South Africa and the world are doing. Let's get those news headlines in before we get going. Thank you, G-Man. Let's start off with your national headlines. President Cyril Ramaphosa is to address the nation this evening at 8 p.m. He earlier congratulated the Springboks on their victory against the All Blacks to bag the World Cup, the Rugby World Cup, record fourth time. Vincent Maguena, his spokesperson, said today would not be a public holiday as grade 12 examinations kick off and this would be a disruptive to the learners' schedules. Meanwhile, South Africans all over the world celebrated the boxers' win. In New York, Mosito Malei, founder of South Africans in New York, NYC, um, staged a huge party for Bok fans in the Big Apple. And staying with our local news, the Victoria Springboks, they will arrive back home at Oliver Tambo International tomorrow morning at 5 to 11. And their victory tour starts on Thursday in Pretoria, Johannesburg and Soweto. On Friday, they go to Cape Town, then Durban on Saturday before concluding the tour in East London on Sunday. Pretoria, Johannesburg, Cape Town and Durban have been selected due to the size of their population and East London for its significance for the sport. Tours to Bloemfontein and Kaberga and also other smaller towns and cities will take place in 2024. Moving to news beyond our own borders, Kenya is to end visa requirements to all African visitors by the end of the year, President William Ruto has said. It is time we realize that having visa restrictions amongst ourselves is working against us, he told an international conference. 
Visa-free travel on the continent has been a goal of the African Union for the past decade. And while there are regional deals and bilateral arrangements, progress towards no restrictions has been slow. Only Seychelles and Gambia and Benin offer entry to all African citizens without a visa. And Mexico has deployed some 17,000 soldiers and police officers to the world-famous holiday resort of Acapulco to restore order. Large-scale looting has occurred since the powerful Hurricane Otis hit the area on Wednesday. Videos on social media show people taking food and water from shops, while others walk out of malls with expensive electronics and clothes. The official death toll from Hurricane Otis stands at 39. The main route to Acapulco has meanwhile been reopened for emergency supplies to reach the city. And while South African rugby fans are still basking in the victory of the Springboks' epic victory over New Zealand in the Rugby World Cup, tennis fans were also in for a pleasant surprise at the final in France on Saturday evening. Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic, two legends of tennis, proved that their second love after tennis was undoubtedly rugby, as both were seen cheering in the stands. Federer was wearing a green and gold scarf supporting South Africa, his mother's land of birth, and Djokovic was seen next to pop star Rita Ora. Federer even visited the box's changing rooms afterwards to have a few beers. Well, celebrations all the way around. Well, listen, we have, we've been dying to get into the sport. Here's Graham with the headlines. Oh, thank you so much, Sozo. Let's make it official and kick off the rugby, shall we? In a thrilling, nail-biting final at the Stade de France, the Springboks secured their second consecutive Rugby World Cup title, narrowly defeating a 14-man New Zealand with only 14 South Africans on the field at the time, 12-11, another one-pointer. Andre Pollard's four penalties, sealing their fourth championship. Kamath Yawa... He stepped up. Despite a red card for Sam Kane, the All Blacks showed incredible bravery and resilience. Bowden Barrett, in fact, scoring the first ever try against the Springboks in a World Cup final, but missed conversions and penalties, costing New Zealand. And I don't think there was one scrum penalty as well. So the Springboks now hold the record as the most successful nation in men's World Cup history with four titles. And we've got to say the spirit at this World Cup has been outstanding, the best ever. Can understand why we're saying that though now let's turn to cricket and of course another world cup building towards a thrilling knockout stage india's mohammed shami delivering an outstanding bowling performance resulting in a 100 run victory over england leaving the defending champions in a very precarious situation for a semi-final spot so england's chase of 230 ended at 129 all out in 34.5 hours skipper Reb sharma's uh, 87 helping india reach 229 for nine Seemingly modest total, but enough to overcome England on a very challenging pitch looked that way. With a flawless record now of six wins, India virtually assured of a semi-final spot, and you must fear them on their home ground. And this victory places India at that top spot on the log, followed by the Proteas in second after their one-wicked win over a very spirited Pakistan, then New Zealand and Australia in third and fourth positions, respectively. Now, of course, more cricket over the weekend. Let's bring it back home. Western Province securing the CSA One Day Cup title with a resounding 107-run victory over the Northwest Dragons in their final at Newlands. So Cape Town, uh, of course, playing host. Western Province's dominant campaign included an unbeaten run in the round-robin phase, and it worked out in their favour. So the standout moment, though, in the match came from a record-breaking fifth-wicket partnership of 199 runs between Captain Kyle Vareno, who we had in the show on Friday, player of the match, Mithlali and Pungwana, both securing centuries in the process. And this helped to propel Western Province to a formidable 307 for eight. Despite a valiant effort uh, from Dragon skipper Vian Lubba, who scored 70, the loss of wickets at regular intervals just was too much and led to their downfall, bowling them out for 200. So congratulations, Via Pia. Now on top football and Erling Haaland while he's back at full speed. In fact, he might not even have found his sixth gear yet. The star of the show is Man City secured a commanding 3-0 win against Manchester United at Old Trafford. So Haaland scoring twice and he could have had more, but his first came from the penalty spot. Then with a header just after halftime, he also set up full Foden for City's third goal. This victory propelling City to within two points of Premier League leaders Tottenham, who got the win on a Friday night, despite their slow start to the 
season. City looking good. Well, United's fifth defeat in 10 league games left them now in eighth place, 11 points adrift of the leaders. Now, as we said, Paul Adams is stepping in first. We're going to be chatting a lot about sport this morning with a firm focus on cricket as well. And we'll get into the nuts and bolts of how the proteas are looking, sitting pretty so high to the top of the log. How will that fare moving forward? But right now, let's see what the weather has in store for us, world champions. And let's take a look at your weather. The SA Weather Service have issued that very cold, wet and windy conditions are expected over the Eastern Cape, KwaZulu-Natal, the Free State, Mpumalanga, Gauteng, Limpopo and Northwest today. The Weather Service also issued three level two warnings for today. There's disruptive snow leading to closing of passes, dangerous driving conditions and loss of valuable, vulnerable livestock is over expected over the extreme western parts of KwaZulu-Natal and the extreme eastern parts of the Free State. Severe thunderstorms with damaging winds, heavy downpours and large amounts of small hail are expected over the northeastern parts of the Northern Cape and the southwestern parts of the Northwest. And damaging winds leading to difficulty in navigation at sea are expected between Alexander Bay and Plettenberg Bay. And finally, extremely high fire danger conditions are expected over parts of the Northern Cape, Northwest and the Cedarburg local municipalities. That's a weather update. Let's take a look at your temperatures. Those are your temperatures for today. We love showing you sunrise views and our sunrise view for this hour is Bernadine from Eshawe and she sent through this photo with her morning view and said, what a great way to start off this week, being a citizen of the greatest rugby nation. Have a phenomenal day, fellow South Africans. Well, Bernadine, thank you for sharing that sunrise view. And if you would love to do that, share your view with us. Our number is 63 408 -8863. Oh, thank you so much, Zozo. We are loving the power of sport this morning. And of course, yes, we're going to be gushing over the Springboks all day, all year, probably for about three or four years from now. Um, but we're going to also take a firm focus on cricket. And Paul Adams is going to step in to bring us up to speed with how the Proteas are doing. A nervy one-wicket win over Pakistan, where we proved our mettle there. When you talk about proving your mettle, we're going to also get to connect with a group of young South African cricketers who put their names on the world stage. We know what sporting chance can do. How powerful powerful their connection to young sports stars are, but of course those youngsters have to deliver and they did. Cannot wait to meet them for a World Cup with a difference after this.
Welcome back, world champions. Let's hope we can make it a double. We're going to turn from rugby to cricket right now. And, of course, there were some moments over the weekend. Keshav Maharaja's cool-headed performance. That was before his celebrations. Then he got pretty hot. They guided the protests to a dramatic one-wicket win over Pakistan, securing their position at the pinnacle of the ICC Men's Cricket World Cup 2023 listing. At the time, of course, India have gone back on top. And this intense encounter marked a turning point in the competition, undoubtedly with both teams displaying their metal on the field and former Proteus player who knows what that feels like. Paul Adams is here to discuss a little bit more. Buddy, I've got to check in, first of all, as someone who feels the national pride on a different level, having represented this country. How are you doing this morning? How are you feeling, well, buddy? Well, the sun's come up and it's a beautiful day in Cape Town. It and is. It's, all you're just thinking is poker. That's all you want to do. <laughs> I love it, man. It's a, I, I've been through this before a couple of times. That's the joy of being as old as I am. I knew what was coming. I was still unprepared. So I, I hope you're okay. I hope your nerves are okay because you're going to have to go through it all over again, buddy, with the cricket. Yeah, you're also <laughs> lucky I haven't got my poker shirt still on for exactly. this morning, but uh, I had to change. I've done a smell <laughs> test of like all three. I'm like, no, but at some point you're going to have to change. Uh, well, let's hope that the spirit is going to inspire the protest, mm -hmm. and it certainly looked like it did. There was some moments in that match, and the way that Pakistan were playing, it felt like they had it in the bag. What was the difference there? Can we put it all on, on Keshav on a, on a brilliant <laughs> show of mental strength at the end of that match? No, I think, look, the, the South African side has been playing actually magnificent cricket. They had that hurdle up against the Netherlands, yeah. but for, for me at the moment, they've been playing those... They've almost dominated a lot of the teams they played. And for them to go over the line uh, against Pakistan that was really fighting hard to stay yeah. in the World Cup or, or make it easier for them to stay in the World Cup <laughs> was, was very important. And, you know, we look at our past World Cups, those close games, mm. we've ended up on the other side. And we needed a bit of luck, we needed a bit of things just to go our way. And that game happened. Um, and it did, and these things matter, as you know, because that psychological bull, that trajectory during a World Cup is all important. We're still wary to put the title of favourites on anybody because it's not just our hoodoo. It, it also kills England. It also puts a lot of pressure on New Zealand and they faltered at critical times. How then do we create that positive mindset, that confidence within a team that is very much confidence-based players? These are big hitters. These are guys that love the big moments. Mm. Maybe is it time for us to let go of the baggage and embrace the fact that we are wanting to be the best team in the world and we can, we can achieve it with this squad? Yeah, I, th I think a key player is like Quinton de Kock, yeah. batting at the top and showing the confidence and he's got 300s already within the tournament. This has been his best. That's his swan song. Um, it's his last time he's wearing uh, the green and gold for in the 50 over format. He's leading the way in that sense and, and everyone's really just galvanised with that. And you must look at our number four, five, and six in Markram, Klaassen, and Miller. They're the terrifying. best in the world. Yeah, terrifying. Over a period of time, and they are starting to dominate. And um, it's just looking at our bowling, making sure our bowling and our fielding is up to standard, up to, to making sure that everyone is really understanding their game plans and how they need to go about it. And that's where the pressure is laying. Um, and Marco Janssen's come in. Left arm is swinging the ball, picking up wickets, which has been magnificent for, for the South African side. It, it seems to have brought balance, um, because we, we always love a quick and, and, and slow balance, but we sometimes need something else, and he's brought, like you say, that beautiful swing that is he's confounding people. This is a beautiful opportunity for individuals to put their hand up, and for also this team that has been building this balance. And we've, it feels like we've got the balance now within the squad. You talk about the batting depth, which is massive, but it kind of feels like we just need one player to come good now. We've almost got that kind of IPL T20 feel in this team, but we are putting massive amounts of runs on the board. Yeah, very important, the runs on the board. Sure. Um, you know, if, I always look at past World Cups and teams that have won. So we look at, the, they've either had two players right up there with uh, leading run in scorers, form, yeah. and we're right there. All right, with Markram and Decock really leading that way, getting hundreds at the top of the order, sets the pace. Then the key, I always, always it's wickets, taking wickets up front. And we've got the bowling that's starting to take wickets up front, leading up with the pack as well. Marco, as we said earlier, is right up there. He swings the ball and the success lays up taking wickets in that first power play because later on it's going to be tough. Um, as we could see, the scores have been massive and it gets really hard to, to, to get those runs uh, later on in the innings.
It's, we're going to get down to the nitty-gritty pretty quickly. It almost feels like all of these matches now, because of the format, kind of feel like a final after a final after a final. Mm -hmm. When we play India, when we play New Zealand, it's going to yeah. feel like a final. Yeah. What do we need to do to get that right? How much pressure is going to be on Keshav Shamsi's shoulders to get that slow bowling right? Because I have a feeling when it comes to India, when it comes to these pitches, they're going to be set up for this Indian side that seems to be milking it for everything they're worth. Well, the benefit is that Shamsi's picked up some wickets now and, and as we go into a tournament, normally they start to turn more. So our spinners will come a lot more into play. But for, for us, we, that win was very important in setting up the last three games. It's just, look, it's some big opposition we're up against. Um, New Zealand, and then there's also and India even, to come. Even Afghanistan, I'm like, yeah. hey, do not count them out. When you talk about runs Dangerous. on the board, they figured it out. So for South Africa to qualify officially, we sh mustn't lose any of these games more than 100 runs. Any of them. No massive losses. So play consistent, be, it, be really just solid in your game. Um, and continue the way they're playing, actually. Yeah. Just keep going on with that blueprint that they've, they've put in place. It's been magnificent. And I think we just got to ride the wave and keep going with it. Because when we get to knockout stages, anything can happen. Completely. And yeah. we're showing a lot of confidence in our game. Uh, we've come in as very quietly. Kind of dark horses, um, yeah. I yeah, like so yeah. for me, it's, it's, it's been magnificent just watching them, how they're going about their business. And just carry on with it. Yeah, as you were, gents, as you were. <laughs> that we're taking ownership of those big moments because the team is executing. They're backing up in those pressure, those critical moments. And, of course, the boys are scoring runs, and we are here to see that. So from one side of the World Championship conversation, well done, you South African beauties. Let's hope we can make it a double. And let's hope this is a sign of what is going to come in the future because we've got some young cricketers who are ready to follow in their path. Oh, well, listen, you tuned into your Feel Good Breakfast show to get all of the sporting updates, and that's exactly what we are doing. We've touched on the cricket, and we've got more inspirational stories to bring you your way. And then, of course, yes, we want to celebrate our Springboks, but there will be plenty of time for that. But first, let's get you inspired. Uh, welcome back to this side of our beautiful studio. We love the balance here, and I'm going to try to stay balanced, but it's very difficult when you are this inspired by sport right now. So eight young cricket players from very marginalized backgrounds when it comes to the South African narrative. We love to use those cliches, backgrounds that include um, very challenging starts in life. They have recently returned from an extraordinary journey in India. I would imagine a life-changing journey where they participated in the Street Child Cricket World Cup. Now this 10-day event united 170 incredible young individuals from 19 countries for a World Cup style cricket tournament shedding lights on the challenges faced by children who have to face this kind of journey to start their life. And here to chat more about this amazing tournament are some of the incredible young kids um, that are, were taking part and of course some of those team members that were there to hold their hand. Congratulations to everyone that took part. So welcome to all of you. Um, can you give yourselves a round of applause because... Um, first of all, you're also world champions because we are all world champions <laughs> this morning. So proudly wearing the green and gold. And I love the green being represented in this kind of notion. Perhaps we can start uh, in the middle. And I don't know if you've all got microphones, but um, congratulations. Back in South Africa, Natalie, how are you feeling about this incredible group of young people? Give us some context to this, what must have been a life-changing journey. Yeah, thanks, Graham. It was an amazing opportunity right from um, when we chatted to Cricket South Africa about this initiative and just getting this group of, of children together and just taking them on this experience that will change our lives and not just them, us as well. Do you know, the, the Street Child United program is, is fantastic. It's, it brings, as you said, children from all around the globe. The, the friends that they made, the experiences, both on and off the cricket pitch, um, was fantastic and, and something that we will all treasure for a very, very long time. Um, so I know we've got a lot of kids here. So I'm going to ask, just introduce yourself, first of all. You've got the microphone in hand. And, and tell me, what was this like for you? How much do you enjoy this experience? Uh, I'm studying into my name. My name is Avoya uh, I'm staying in... Kylie Chain Makaya. Representing. Uh, I, I like to say the tournament is, was nice. And like we we facing, like we're playing uh, other 
other countries and we so like so proud. I, I can feel it, dude. I know what it's like to step into that space. I've interviewed so many amazing young sports stars. Now, the joy is I get to interview you five, ten years from now when you've got the pro tiers top on, and that's how these narratives absolutely play out. I think if we can shift to the end, I can see the pride is bubbling out of your, your chest, literally. Um, maybe you can explain from your perspective what it's like to see this kind of narrative playing out, to, to see a shift in the reality that is faced every day yeah. to what this represents moving forward for the young people here. How are you feeling after their, their adventure? Yeah, no, like you say, like, I'm very proud and it's been um, a long journey to try and get them to this position here uh, because some of them really didn't have identification. Yeah. So it was like, sure, a lot of work to try and get um, passports, uh, birth certificates, IDs, which we got like literally in the last day that we had to fly out. So some of them, I had to drive all the way to Bravo, um, Hope of Affairs to pick up one of the passports so that we can all go, um, go to... And, and there's nothing quite like running into Home Affairs when you're in a... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, it's been, yeah, it's been that. And to see them um, here now and just watching them in India just grow into one big team and really representing our country um, with passion. And, um, yeah, like Nat said, the friends that they've made, um, the songs that they sang in India are still playing in my head, so... I'm uh, sure they're still playing in other people's heads. <laughs> you know, hopefully the proteins as well, because they're going to need, need that kiss. Um, just quickly, I'd like to chat to one of the ladies. I don't know, you can... Any one of you can speak. Swing that microphone back there, my brother. Thank you. Um, so introduce yourself, first of all. OK, um... It's on, it's on, it's good. My <laughs> name is Sihem and I'm from um, Kailicha Inside B, um, from um, Bapumelele Children's Home, and I'm representing them, the Team South Africa. Um. Can you please say your area again so everyone can hear it? From Site B? Site B in Kailicha. Boom. Now, I want you, if you are watching from there right now, to take this on board, because you've just gone overseas to represent your country against other nations in the world. How did that feel for you? What was that experience like? The experience was very, very great, and it was um, the most um, exciting opportunity for me, and I'm so glad that I was part to, to be the ones that who experienced how was India, and to actually um, get to communicate with other children from other countries yeah. and to feel how they, how they, how they survived and also to um, get to know them. Yeah, it was such a great opportunity. You're now part of a global village, a global village that loves to see exactly this notion play out. Everything that has been feeding into the challenges of your life makes you stronger to the point that you get to have these moments. That's how it works in the world of sport. You can see my hair rising up now, the goosebumps, because it's not lip service. I mean it. I'm old enough to have seen the story play out a few times, and I know, undoubtedly, I will see a few of you at least in that Protea jersey, because that's what this means. But you've inspired a lot of other young people. Thank you so much to Sporting Chance. You guys do this every day, I know, but these moments hopefully you get to take on board and are getting that validation because this is absolutely incredible. Paul Adams is here, hey, if you want to just drop a few <laughs> words. Um, I think he is ready to aid in any way, just like the cricketing fraternity is, aid, is ready to aid in any way. Why? Because this is the difference that sport can make. It can give you a sporting chance. <laughs>
Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso on S3. Now, every student and parent knows that endurance is the combination of understanding and an extra boost of mental, emotional, and physical energy to keep going during the hustle and bustle of test season. Now, we gave you the chance to ask experts a few tips and tricks that can be applied during a test or an exam, and we have the panel of experts here to join us this morning. We have senior phase educator Zeta Johnson joining us, as well as educational psychologist Dr. Sharon Aitken. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, there are some burning questions <laughs> we've asked the youth to ask us. Zaida, I'm so sorry, but yes, we are so excited that you are also joining us. Thank you. Um, we have some questions that came through from the students themselves, and we want to ask your expert opinions on how to do that. So I think the first thing that always comes through is students panic when it comes to exams. They get overwhelmed by the process of examination. Zaida, perhaps you can start off with what advice would you give your students or any student that's about to embark on a big exam? You know, I think the, the best advice we can give somebody is to just study. You have to study before the time. But, you know, in the exam setting, you do have feelings of nervousness. You're overwhelmed mm. at times with, with nervousness. And there are some things that you can do. And uh, for, for the student who feels that anxiety, it would be best for them to just calm themselves down. Mm. How you do that, that's the way you have to find out. So I would say that you need to just take some deep breaths, you know, from the core up, blow it out, all that anxiety. And then you can also just visualize and find yourself in a happy space for a minute. And then once you've calmed down, read the test paper and you'll see that you're familiar with the content. Approach the questions from what you know best. Answer that and you will see that your confidence will be gained. And Voila, get started. Yes, get started because you've done all the work. You've you done all the work. You've it prepared is. for whatever you need to, to read and study about. So, yeah. Definitely. Now, Dr. Sharon, a lot of young individuals, they put pressure on themselves to perform and get that result. And then there's the snowball effect. How can we stop putting that pressure on ourselves? What I like to tell my clients is that an exam is just the culmination of the whole year. So you've, you've actually processed the work. But you need to calm down and you need to approach it almost like a game. An exam is, in fact, just a game. Mm. And if you go through the paper and you strategize and you see, OK, I don't understand this question so well, but I understand this one very well, do a quick mental calculation of how many marks is this question actually worth do I lose it? Um, do I know so little that I need to ditch this question and focus on getting 100% correct of this question? Just those kinds of thought processes alone can actually decrease your anxiety as well. I mean, you've covered the other ones beautifully. Mm. Yeah. But um, just to just approach it like a game, because it takes a lot of the pressure off to think a strategy game if you are going to leave questions till later, though, this is the old teacher in me coming up. Please remember to number your questions very clearly. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. so, <laughs> so the question doesn't get lost. Mm. But other than that, it is weighing up. Which question do I know the best? Answer it and leave the ones that you really don't know because you're wasting time on them. And that's, that's going to boost your confidence. If you get through the questions <coughs> that you, you know and you know you're confidently mm. going to earn those marks, so what we have done, Zeta and Dr. Sharon, is we have questions from social media. So let's take a look at the first one that came through. We have student number one saying, I get nervous when it comes to Afrikaans comprehension, comprehension as it's not my first language. What is the best way to successfully answer comprehensions? What are your thoughts? Um, a comprehension in any language, it forms the basis of any language paper. So whether you're going to do it in English or Afrikaans, there's a process involved in answering a comprehension and to make life easier for yourself. So first of all, I would say that doing reading and reading and reading more, that is what you have to start off with prior to the exam in the language that you're going to write. And then, of course, there's a process for, for comprehensions. You activate your, you first look at the topic. The topic is the most important thing. 
and you predict what the thing is going to be about. And you know, because we have so many visual learners, you know, accessing social media, mm -hmm. you do a little visual walk, you picture what the topic is going to be about. And that gives you a background to what you think you're going to read, what you think, because you haven't read yet, mm -hmm. right? Um, for, to, to make it a little bit easier, you underline, okay, I'm going to use language things now, okay? So you underline the opening sentence of each paragraph, and just a little clue to those people, those underlining those opening sentences helps you with a multiple choice. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, most of the time they ask the multiple choice from the opening sentence. Following that, you're going to just remember that there's a, you know, your interrogative pronouns, ask yourself, decode the paper, ask yourself, analyze, do some, some analyzing there, ask yourself why, what, when about the paper, how and which, go through. Okay, once you've done that, you'll see that it's easy for you to, to understand. But for the learner, especially for Afrikaans, just for her to engage in the language a little bit, she should just ask her friends to WhatsApp in Afrikaans. They're in the same class. Yeah. WhatsApp, WhatsApp each other in Afrikaans. Speak Afrikaans during your intervals so that you can get used to the language. And then obviously read every single night in the language of which you're going to have the test in. Oh, thank you. Thank, I feel like saying thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. That, that was incredible. <laughs> we have another question that came through on social media, and this is what the student said. I get very stressed out when writing tests and exams. What are the things I can do when I feel overwhelmed during the exam? What advice would you give? Well, I feel like, mm. uh, Zaida, you answered that in the beginning, mm. but. Dr. Sharon, how, how would you encourage this young individual to stay calm during the exam? So you, the person really needs to watch to how their anxiety is spiraling and try and catch it as soon as possible with the deep breathing exercises mm -hmm. that Zayda raised earlier. Breathing in slowly, breathing in, out slowly, just find a, a happy thought or a happy space that you can put your head into. One thing that used to work really well for me, because I've sworn I'm never writing another exam in my life, <laughs> <laughs> is to actually... Here you go. <laughs> if you're allowed to, to get up quietly, go to the bathroom, mm. splash some cold water on your face, just stay there for about 30 seconds if need be, calm yourself down, come back, sit down, and start again. Start with the easier questions and then progress to the more difficult questions. Um, and I think above all, remember that there are very few exams that are irrevocable mm -hmm. in the sense that if you haven't done well, that it's the end of the world. It's never, we are, it's never the end of the world. Yes. Never, it can always be fixed. You There's can always a re rewrite. rewrite. Exam. There's always a rewrite. So it's really, really not worth getting that stressed about. Um, It'll soon be over, and then you can assess and move on from there. Well, to the both of you, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for putting our students' minds at ease. It is a big season coming up with wow. final exams mm. for each of the different mm. grades. So if you are embarking on various tests, just remember that all of the techniques you learn today, it will help you in future tomorrow. And you also can own your future now by finishing strong with BioPlus. Oh, thank you so much. I got a little bit nervous there. So it's okay to be a little bit nervous about your exams, but I love that notion of treat it like a high-pressure game, okay? The stakes aren't that high. The rest of your life isn't over, but it's an opportunity to shine. And we're going to continue on that path right now. And we're going to look at education slightly differently. Now, statistics show that about half of South Africans, 50% of South Africa students drop out of school before completing secondary education. There are drivers for this. Among these learners who write end of year exams, about 25% fail. That is heartbreaking because I know what it means to the learners at that moment. So what are we doing about the problem? Well, one incredible individual is going to join us this morning to answer that very question, armed with an innovative online learning platform called Topic. I'm interested already. Francois van Loo, welcome to the show, my brother. I'm going to be like the ninth yes. fist bump. Uh, first, yeah, we've been fist bumping this morning. Yeah, man, it's a morning to fist bump, you world yes. champion. You, <laughs> I'm going to call you the world champion of education. Now, um, online has changed the game, yes. courtesy of what we went through with COVID and that crazy time of our lives. Yes. Emerge Topic. 100%. Talk me through this platform. What is it all about? So Topic is a, a FET phase uh, learner platform. So it's for learners in grade 10, 11, and 12. Okay. And what we've done is we've created um, the entire syllabus in digital format. 
and you can literally go through over a thousand of our topics, uh, topic-based lessons that's on the platform. Wow, plug and play. Yeah, no, 100% plug and play. Um, why? Because this feels like a great it's way a to <laughs> just undo <laughs> the socio-economic balance of South Africa <laughs> in one file so, swoop. So um, our why is obviously a very great why. It's like to really play, play a part in making our country better. But um, this is actually, as you mentioned, from COVID, this stems from that. So we work on um, pro uh, programs where we are funded to deliver math and science focused uh, programs Brilliant. throughout the country. And then we realized that after this whole period of us doing this, we have this database of content. Why don't we make it freely avail available to learners across the world? Yeah, and we want that. We want to equalize this equation. Exactly. Um, you need to complement the structures that are already there. And that's going to become more and more difficult for schools that actually have like a, a hard position in the world. Yes. Because a lot of people are moving online. But I think it's a balance of both. It is a balance. How do learners get the most out of this platform? How do we engage with topic? So, um, and, uh, like I think a big challenge we face is the technological divide in South Africa, right? Yeah. So we, we tried to make it as accessible as possible. So we really looked at, can it work on like the lowest cost Android device? And yes, we achieved that. So, um, so I, I think our learners can really use it in preparation for the exam this year is literally go look at the, the past exam papers where you're you practicing on, go look at topics that you know you don't really understand yet, go find that video content on our platform and go study that continuously. Because I can speak from experience, some people just get the video medium. Some people <laughs> yes. need to see, not hear. Some people need to write, not speak. Everyone has a different mode. 100%. How well has this worked? You wouldn't be here on TV yeah, no, we... in this moment of manifest so, if it wasn't working. So we didn't spend a single cent on marketing the product right wow. and so just by word of mouth from learners we have over 30,000 users on our platform right now that's another first bump moment <laughs> wow we've only launched in august so it's well yeah, it's going quite insane so i think our feedback from the users that they want to do it I mean, uh, they are tiktok generation they want to watch video 100 um, percent. Yes. And, and the joy is most of them are posting their own educational videos 100%. and guiding other kids and then we are seeing ourselves represented in that sense representation is on a different level right now we're feeling the pinch, buddy. Yes. Everyone is feeling the economic pinch right yes. now. People are pulling their kids out of school because of that economic pinch. How much is this going to cost? It's totally free. So it's <laughs> it's free for learners. Um, um, and in the South African context, we will never charge for a user to be on our platform. Boom. That's We should have opened with that. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> beautiful. Francois, yes. thank you so much. If you're a grade 10, 11, or 12 student watching right now and needing just a little extra help, some context around stuff you're not that familiar with or you want to get passionate about a New topic, topic.co.za is where you can get all the support and help you need. Francho, we absolutely Name. love your work. Thank you so well much. done, world champion. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs>Welcome back, world champions. Let's turn our attention once more to rugby after an incredible weekend of tackles, of scrums, of little moments, of inches and one point. 
It's a final recap brought to you by, I would imagine now, the very proud and also spent sponsors of the 2023 Rugby World Cup, Total Energies. To the Total Energies team, thank you for giving us the best World Cup ever. And of course, we are a little biased, and I'm talking about myself and our sports producer, Lorenzo Darius. Hello, world champ. Hello, world champ. How are you doing? Oh, buddy, how are you doing, <laughs> no, my friend? I'm fine. I see your eyes. You're still teary a bit. Ah, uh, but I was a mess, man. I've been a mess this whole time. It was it was a very internal World yeah. Cup for me, and thank goodness I, I chose to be at home with my little boy. The same. It, it was magical. Uh, and Aaron Smith, with his little boy, after that final was probably the moment oh, for me where yes. it put it all in perspective. So congratulations, bud. Thanks for, for all of your help through this journey. Amazing. You've educated so many people, myself included. So thank you, my bro. Let's take it a step back. Of course, we had the third and fourth playoff, the bronze medal winners, England yeah. against Argentina. That Argentinian side, man, they showed some heat. You thought they were yeah. losing the passion. They did. They couldn't have done much more while they could have won. But yeah, um, in have. terms of, of their, their <laughs> physicality, of their intention, yeah. and, and I suppose something for England, a positive to take out of what yes. has been a torrid journey for them. No, definitely. I like the fact that they, they kept their medals on. Mm. Uh, England's been this little, you know, they've yeah. had this spoiled little brat syndrome within rugby. Mm. And, and I say Thank that you, Owen Farrell, for that one. There buddy. you go. Yeah. And, and they've done it before where they took their silver medals off in 2019. And I was sitting there just watching and thinking, are you going to do the same or are you going to appreciate the moment, yeah. you know, of a World Cup? Because you're never guaranteed a medal at a World Cup. You can come in as the number one team in the world Clearly. and get knocked out, you know, yeah. way before the time. Because it's, it's not a season, it's a World Cup. Yeah. It's a cup competition and we want a bit of that spice. But ultimately, the flip side of that narrative, if you're going to be the best team in yeah. the world in history and win four, you want to be yeah. the best when no, you, you do, do it. And we had to beat the beast. Oh, yes, we did. We had a wounded beast <laughs> in the form of the All Blacks. Yeah. We were a wounded beast in ourselves when yes. Dion Free had to come in in like the third minute or something. Yeah, second, second, third minute, yes. Incredible. I'm going to ask you a very generalized question here. How did we win that match? How did we? How did we win By that match? By proving a point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this, this says that the system that Rossi and Jacques have been building probably for about 15 years now, by yeah. the, the sounds of it, yeah, yeah. has changed the face of world rugby right now. Do you think this has set the new bar that every other team is going to try to achieve yeah. from a strategic perspective? Never mind the amazing personal performances, this has changed the game. No, it has. You need to think outside the box. Uh, if I can Outside like the box. That. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, box to box champions, uh, it was said, you know, so nicely while watching the game as well. You really need to change and evolve. Yeah. And that is what Rassi has shown, is the fact that we cannot think of a 5-3 all the time. Each team is different. The dynamics of different teams needs to be able to help that team win and have that extra edge. Is the scrum going to help us? Yes, it is. Yeah. Is the high ball going to help the All Blacks? Yes, it is. Are we going to target Richie Maunga all the time because wow. he's, he's, he's just not getting there? That is how you need to work around it. But now it's also shown, and this is the wonderful thing about the game, is that once one player comes off, one, another player needs to be able to fit into two, three different positions. positions. And oh, that's completely. where Vili comes in, that's where Damien comes in, that's where Grant Williams comes in. You need that versatility. You are no longer a one-dimensional player. Completely. As yeah. proven by a 36-year-old Dean Faree who made his debut at 35 in a different position, then played out of position in the World Cup <laughs> final and was one of the most dominant players in yep. that team. Um, every little choice was amazing. We're seeing the only try there ever scored against the Springboks yes. in a Rugby World Cup final. So I feel for the Barretts more than any Ooh. other family in the world mm. this weekend. An incredible opportunity for individuals to put their hand up. I don't think I, I remember one scrum penalty no, in that match. Okay, so for everyone who was saying that we were going to drop the bomb squad and we were going to win by whatever default yeah. through that, that loophole we had found, that didn't happen. No. We beat them in the high balls. Damien Phillips, who I've been pumping up through this entire World Cup because I know what he's worth as a yeah. man. I've met him yes. so many times in those critical moments. Each individual, fuff, all of them stepped yeah. up. Peter Steph de Toy. Oh, I was thinking Has anyone that... ever made that many tackles? I know he was man of the um, match, but that's, was, that was super yeah, human. Uh, yeah, there was someone else, uh, Terry de Sotois, <laughs> the, the, the previous <laughs> French captain. He was inducted into the Wall of Fame. He has the most tackles in a match. I think it was that 8-7 match that they lost to the All Blacks uh, in 2011. It should have been theirs. Incredible. But uh, he, he thanked uh, Peter Steph at the World uh, Rugby Awards last night and said, thank you for not taking my World <laughs> But 28 tackles, immense. He only had one pass in that game. Can you believe it? Yeah. I looked at the stats and I just sat there and I looked at it and I was like, this is history in the making. I'm, I'm literally going to take that, uh, that, that stat sheet 
and frame it. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> sure you're I'm not doing. the only one. I'm sure, I'm sure Jacques <laughs> and, and Rassi have framed it as well because yeah. it's validation. There have been so many levels yeah. to the improvement in the game. And I'm going to call it the beautiful game because they earned the right. Because yes, they played they it beautifully. I'm talking about Portugal. Played it beautifully. I'm talking about countries that shouldn't have had a chance, proved the power of rugby. What has been yeah. the best part about this? I'm going to call it the most bromantic the bro rugby <laughs> World Cup in history. Um, what has been your highlights? My highlights, I've had quite a few. And that was seeing the, the performance nations. Uh, you know, they're not the high performance that they're supposed to be. Uh, the Romanias, the yeah. Portugals. Watching the video of Portugal getting home. Seeing the crowd that's with them. Fiji. Mm. showing what they worth and why they should be included in, in Super Rugby, yeah. as well as in the Rugby Championship. Japan as well still showing their metal at the end Completely. of the day, that they are moving forward. I'd love to see more of the Pacific Island nations come together, similar to the West Indies in cricket. Completely. Can yeah. we do that? Some people are going to say, no, they need their own identity. I feel that we can and they, they should be able to accommodate a team like that it's to allow it's them a, it's to a, it's forward. a question of geography. It's a question of yes. land and geography. Yeah. I get that. And I think the circle has been made wider, undoubtedly. But what has happened, and I'm going to thank you again, my bro, because you've been amazing <laughs> through this journey. But what has happened, the world has been united under one notion. And I think we owe a debt of gratitude to Sia Khaleesi for taking that mantle on. Somehow he was able to walk this dual line of being a bastion of hope to this country and the world, and also a brilliant rugby player and captain. And I think every player in that team earned that right individually, but moreover, as a team playing for each other and playing for us. Ah, oh, so congratulations, South Africa, and the World Cup may be over, but Total Energy service stations, thankfully, are not going anywhere. They are still in our corner, ready to top us up on fuel, on our bright charcoal, because there will be many more brides, our firelighters, our snacks, our drinks. Maybe they'll take us on their shoulder and let us cry a little bit if we need to, if we're going through something emotional. <laughs> and the best part is you can earn those club points as you do it, and you can redeem them for cash back, helping you save on those future pur purchases in preparation for the next World Cup. <laughs> like in rugby, it's uniting our energies that helps us move forward. Well, the excitement is here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. And this morning, we asked you on our Good Morning Post, what did you think of the Rugby World Cup final? What went wrong? What went right? Share your thoughts with us. And this is what you had to say. Mazette says, uh, we won. Paul Adams says, when you pass by one point, you pass. Rugby World Cup champions for a fourth time. History was made. That is for sure. Adele says, everything is as it should be. Let it be. The cup is home where it belongs. That's all that matters. Booker has united us once again. That is absolutely true. Well, why don't you share your thoughts with us? You can head on over to our social media pages, comment on our Good Morning post, or feel free to share your voice through a voice note. Our number is 063-408-8863. We will be right back with more on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Welcome back. In case you've been asleep for the last four days in a thrilling and rain-soaked showdown at Stade de France, La Box. The best rugby team in the history of the game secured their second consecutive and fourth overall Webb Ellis Cup trophy with a courageous 
12-11 victory over the All Blacks, who were equally courageous. This momental rugby clash featured some dramatic red cards, a couple of yellows, unrelenting defence, the best we've ever seen from the box, and it marked a historic moment in international sporting history, never mind just rugby. And of course, joining us all the way from France is someone who's experienced it firsthand. Please put down your croissant, radio sports presenter Jeremy Harris, you beauty. Good morning, world champion. Morning, my friend. How are you doing? Oh, buddy, I would imagine not as good as you. My friend, let's talk through this World Cup experience. You were front row seat, literally. What was that like, my brother? Cool. Well, I've got to tell you, Graham, it was, it was the most uh, intense experience from a fan's perspective. I can only imagine uh, what the players must have felt like on, you know, on both teams. Uh, but um, getting there, there was just this enormous buzz. I mean, I don't know, well, I'm sure you know, 80-odd thousand people packed inside uh, the Stade de France. Uh, and thank goodness for the, uh, the big turnout from Springbok supporters because there was a lot of, uh, I suppose, neutral support for the, uh, for the All Blacks, more so than for, than for us. Uh, and then, of course, there were those few uh, uh, New Zealand supporters who had made it all the way. Uh, so we needed to have a big, uh, a big South African contingent to, to add the voice. And thank goodness, because there were times when we were singing in the rain, you know, for the booker, uh, you know, at times when things got a little bit difficult, a little bit hectic uh, on the park. At times, buddy. How about like 80 minutes, all right? Um, it was so intense for us to watch the red card moments. And I, I feel for Sam Kane, I really, really do. Um, those yellow card moments, the tension of waiting for Sears kind of judicial process to go through. Cheslin's yellow card at the end of the match. Were you like him? Did you have your face in your jersey for the last seven minutes of that match? What were those critical moments like pitch side? Because there were a few. I mean, the hair's rising on my, my arms again. It was terrifying to be a million miles away. What did it feel like being up close and personal? I mean, I've got to tell you that, that I was worried. I've been saying to people I've been worried about this... Um, this um, uh, a debunker review system that they've introduced uh, and I was worried that it would surface if you like uh, in the final at the very wrong moment uh, and so yes I, I do feel for Sam Kane one of the absolute giants of the game for sure um, because I had a sneaky feeling looking at it uh, you know in the stadium when they brought it up on the big screen I had a feeling that that would be upgraded uh, to a red and of course that's exactly what happened um, I was less worried about Sears uh, being upgraded but of course 10 minutes off the field against what was just a single-minded, very focused, very fierce uh, all-black team. Uh, ten minutes off the park uh, does, does make you sort of sit closer to the edge of your seat. Uh, but it's that Cheslin Colby uh, yellow card when I knew that he was not going to come back. There was no time for him to be coming back on the field uh, that I thought that that might hurt us in the end. Uh, the all-blacks lead little invitation uh, to take advantage of small little advantages. Uh, and I was worried that they would, uh, you know, take us... Uh, in those last eight minutes when he would be off the park. Yeah, man, I mean, I felt for him as well because you could just feel what he was going through in that moment. There have been so many standout moments in this particular World Cup, so many layers to what we've all been able to get out of it. But from the rugby perspective, from the game itself, what has stood out for you as a man who is obviously very deeply connected to the rugby narrative and the sporting journey that so many of these sports stars have been through? What has stood out for you? Do you know, Graham, I think that, that you know, just looking at, at it, you, you step back and, and you don't talk about South Africa, firstly, for a second, uh, I, I think that the entire World Cup has delivered uh, a, a fantastic advert, if you like, for, yeah. uh, for you know, promoting the, the game across the world. I was so excited to see teams like uh, Fiji, uh, teams like uh, Tonga, Portugal, teams, yeah. you know, the, the small teams, Romania, Portugal, uh, step up. Uh, and uh, and fly the flag. They they were not there for a haircut. They were not there uh, to make up the numbers. Uh, and so from from a from a rugby perspective, I was so excited for them. You know to see how they had in the last four years, uh, if you like, made up the gap, made up the difference, and we're now going to be uh, teams that we would need to take note of in the future. So that was sort of just stepping back and watching all of the games uh, as, a, I suppose, as a neutral fan, a fan of the sport. Uh, but in terms of the South Africans, I mean, they came there. Um, and just felt different to me. They, yeah. they felt like 
Uh, they were not arrogant, but they, they felt they like they it. were um, ready for this World Cup, maybe more so than any World Cup that we'd seen them play in. Uh, even, in uh, even, I think, uh, more so than, than the, the 2019 World Cup. Completely. They just felt like a different offering. Um, and there was this support. I was I was lucky enough to spend some time with them uh, at their team hotel for, or, or sort of in preparation for the Scotland game, which was the first pool game. And you just got a sense that that year was... A group of men, a group of uh, or a squad of players uh, who were there ready. to, you know, fall on the tracks in front of the proverbial train for each other. Uh, and uh, I think that wow. we saw that in each of those games. There was just they so much, it, yeah. uh, uh, as I say, support for each other. I absolutely love that notion of the bigger picture being bigger than the individual. You represent one of those individuals that has helped this team rebrand and rebuild like everyone within the South African sporting media. So take a little bit of that, just a little bit of that luster for yourself, my friend. And then go out and please have the best coffee and croissant combo you can this morning because at the very least you've earned that. Congratulations, Springboks, four-time champions of the world. We've been going on a bit. We're going to be a little bit late for the news and those sporting headlines, so let's jump right in. Thank you, Graham. Let's start off with national headlines. It's a few minutes after seven. It's all systems go for 717,350 matriculants expected to sit this final examination across 6,898 centres today as the 2023 National Senior Certificate examinations get underway. A total of 207 question papers, 72,500 invigilators and 52,500 markers will drive the examination process. Basic Education Minister Angie Moseka said the figures are not mere statistics but embody the aspirations, dreams and relentless efforts of all grade 12 learners. And staying with our local news, President Cyril Ramaphosa is to address the nation this evening at 8 p.m. He earlier congratulated the Springboks on their victory against the All Blacks to bag the World Rugby Cup a second, in fact, for a record fourth time. Vincent Manguena, his spokesperson, said today would not be a public holiday as grade 12 examinations kick off and this would be disruptive to learners' schedules. Meanwhile, South Africans all over the world celebrated the boxers' win. In New York, there's a founder, Musito Ramaili, of South Africans in New York, staged a huge party for Bok fans in the Big Apple. And moving to news abroad, thousands of Gazans have broken into warehouses and carried away relief supplies. The UN aid agency views this as a worrying sign that law and order is crumbling. Hamas's leader in Gaza, Yahya Sinwar, has uh, meanwhile offered to release all Israeli hostages in exchange for Hamas prisoners in Israel. Hamas took more than 200 hostages to Gaza when attacking Israel earlier this month. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he did not rule out such a possibility, but his main priority remained to destroy Hamas in Gaza. And Kenya is to end visa requirements to all African visitors by the end of the year, President William Ruto has said. It is time we realize that having visa restrictions amongst ourselves is working against us, he told an international conference. Visa-free travel on the continent has been a goal of the African Union for the past decade. And while there are regional deals and bilateral arrangements, progress towards no restrictions has been slow. Only Seychelles, the Gambia and Benin offer entry to all African citizens without a visa. And some sad news, US actor Matthew Perry, best known for playing the wisecracker Chandler Bing in the hit 90s TV sitcom Friends, has passed away at the age of 54. He was found unresponsive in a hot tub at his home in Los Angeles. Friends aired from 1994 to 2004. Its final episode was watched by 52.5 million in the US, making it the most watched TV episode this century. Born in Massachusetts in 1969, Perry was raised in Ottawa, Canada. He attended elementary school with Justin Trudeau, the present Canadian Prime Minister. He moved to Los Angeles as a teenager and became an international star on Friends, one of the most successful TV shows of all time. Our thoughts and prayers are certainly with his family. That's where I leave your headlines. Let's take another look at your sport.
Now, of course, we might be running with this one every day this week in a thrilling final at the Stade de France. The Springboks secured their second consecutive Rugby World Cup title, narrowly defeating a 14-man New Zealand with 14 pro uh, Springboks on the field at the time, 12-11. Andre Pollard was the difference, his four penalties sealing their fourth championship. Despite a red card for All Blacks captain Sam Kay, the All Blacks did show some resilience, a lot of bravery. Bowden Barrett, in fact, scoring the first ever try against the Springboks in a World Cup final but they were left to rue missed conversions uh, and penalties. Certainly cost them in the end. So the Springboks now hold the record as the most successful nation in men's World Cup history with four titles. Incredible. Now let's move to the other World Cup. And of course, India's Mohammed Shami came good, delivering an outstanding a masterclass bowling performance, in fact, resulting in a 100-run uh, victory over England. And of course, leaving the defending champions now in a very precarious situation for a semi-final berth. So England's chase of 230 runs ended at 129 all out and just 34.5 overs. Skipper Rohit Sharma set the platform 87 there, helping India reach 229 for nine. Seemingly modest total, but enough to overcome England on a very challenging pitch. With a flawless record of now six wins, India virtually assured of that semi-final spot. This victory places India at the top of the table. South Africa just behind them. Um, of course, that was after their one-wicket win over Pakistan on Friday night. Then we've got New Zealand, who we face on Wednesday, and Australia in third and fourth positions, respectively. So a lot on the line. Now let's bring it back home for more cricket and glorious. Western Province secured the CSA One Day Cup title with a resounding 107 run victory over the Northwest Dragons in that final at Newlands. Uh, so, Western Province's dominant campaign included an unbeaten run in the round robin phase. And the standout moment in the match came from a record breaking fifth wicket partnership of 199 between captain fantastic Carl Verena, who'll be out on the show on Friday, and then player of the match, Miklali Mpongwana, both scoring centuries in the process. This propelled Western Province to a formidable 3.07 for 8. Despite a valiant effort from Dragons skipper Vian Lubba, he scored 70. The loss of wickets at regular key intervals led to their downfall and ultimately getting bowled out for 200. Now, let's throw it back to last night's footballing action and Erling Haaland, oh, he's out of the gates now. Star of the show as Man City secured a commanding 3-0 win against an embattled Manchester United at Old Trafford. So Haaland scoring twice, first from the penalty spot and then with a header just after half-time. And he also set up full Foden for City's third goal, Foden announcing his arrival properly. And this victory propelling City to within two points now of the current league leaders, Tottenham, who obviously got their win on Friday night. And despite their slow start, to the season, City looking good. United's fifth defeat in 10 league games, leaving them in eighth place, 11 points adrift of the leaders. So some big questions being asked. But that's where we leave our sport for now. Let's take a look at the roads. Let's take a look at your traffic in Gauteng, Benoni. There's been an accident on the N12 westbound. It's after Tom Jones Road. The right lane is closed. Please remain cautious while driving. And in Belleville, Cape Town, there are roadworks taking place on the N1 outbound after Durban Road. Two lanes are closed. Expect delays and allow for travel time. And in KwaZulu-Natal, it is experiencing some icy conditions. Roads are slippery and wet. Please practice caution. That's your traffic. Let's take another look at your weather. And we start off with some news. The KwaZulu-Natal Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs Department has activated a joint operation as severe weather conditions are forecast. The operations cluster includes all municipalities in the province, law enforcement agencies and rescue teams. The SA Weather Service says there will be showers and thunder showers in most parts of the province. However, severe thunderstorms and strong winds are expected over the western parts of the province. Freezing temperatures are expected to lead to snowfall over Van Rienens Pass on the N3 and the Drakensberg Mountains. Very cold, wet and windy conditions are also expected over the Eastern Cape, KwaZulu-Natal, the Free State, Mpumalanga, Gauteng, Limpopo and Northwest. Well, that's your news. Let's take a look at your temperatures for today.
Those are your temperatures. Let's take a look at your sunrise views. Our sunrise view for the hour was sent in by Jackie, and this photo came from her view in East London. And I love that she simply said, always grateful for another day. Well, thank you, Jackie. We absolutely agree with you. And if you would love to be like Jackie and share your sunrise views with us, do so. Our WhatsApp line is open. That number is 063-408-8863. Oh, thank you so much, Zoe. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. We're a case of the walking wounded, and Zoe's going to take one for the team. We brought in Ashwin for our high-calorie workout. Now, we're hoping it's going to be a post-rugby weekend stretch or something nice to ease us into the week, but great to have him here so you can get moving, get the blood pumping again. And we're going to also take a look at how tech can aid that health and wellness journey. We'll see you in a moment. Welcome back. And now Vodacom, we know, is making it easier, more easy than ever, in fact, to help us achieve our health and wellness goals. We can now enhance our plans to access a wide variety of fitness devices like smartwatches and buds, appliances like air fryers, which I use every day. Um, and of course, we have access to music and streaming platforms, which helps us to unwind after a stressful day. And we've asked Ashwin to step in because you're just looking too fit, bro. Clearly winter has worked, um, but you are smiling from ear to ear, which I love. But and it begs the question, when you make this your purpose, okay, it's not just your own fitness, but you've chosen to help other people unlock that. How much of a difference does it make when people take that first step? Whatever the motivation is, whether it's a playlist or whatever that thing is that gets them there, what change do you see in the people you work with when they embrace this health and wellness journey? I feel like health and wellness definitely helps you with every aspect of life. So it's not yeah. just about fitness, though. It's about your mental well-being, physical well-being, everything holistically, though, in just making a better person and enjoying life, though. Like, later in life, you tend to see the benefits as well. That's when it really kicks in. Trust me, Rob. In, a, in my post-operative recovery, after some pretty serious things, if I didn't have that grounding from when I was younger, I don't know where I would be. What gets you going, dude? Is it a playlist? Is it being able to track your, your heart rate and just see how much fitter you are today than you were yesterday? What tech gets you going? How do you get yourself motivated? I think it's definitely a playlist, man. Really? Like, definitely. Because if you don't have that playlist in, firstly, people will come disturb you all the time. In <laughs> <laughs> so, definitely. Um, so, yeah, definitely a playlist with the fitness watches as well. It's good to track your calories, track your steps as well, though. So, I think fitness has definitely enhanced the, the, the fitness industry. Yeah. So, I feel like it's going to get even better and better. These are tools that kind of speak to a journey of not getting to the top of the mountain, but taking that first step. For someone who wants to do that, how would you suggest they set themselves up? What's the first step towards health and wellness in terms of, of how you operate? I feel like the first step would be not waiting for the perfect time. Okay. So it's more, it might sound like cliche, but I feel like it's rather day one. Yeah. So don't wait for the perfect time. Don't wait like, ah, oh, nah, I'm going to wait till I lose this amount of kgs. For sure. I'm going to wait for summer, or I'm going to wait for the new year, new year, new me. Yeah. I feel like the perfect time is now immediately. 
I love that. Um, now, I joke about the air fryers in this thing, but it, it changed my life. And I eat so much more healthily because I'm cooking quick. Um, I've moved away from the smoothies now, and I think I need to go back into that space moving into summer. Um, what does nutrition look for? What, what um, kind of technology do you use in that space to make getting the healthier meals a little bit easy? Give us a life hack here, bro. Life hacks, I think you have it already though, like air fryer. So nutrition is everything when it comes to health and fitness though. So you can be doing 900 burpees a day and be eating KFC afterwards. I mean, like... <laughs> yeah. Calories yeah. in, calories out. You've yeah, got to it's all about, balance. Life is all about balance. Yeah, exactly, you got it spot on though. But I feel like your air fryers and also like using minimal. So if you say, oh, I'm not going to use oil, Use a small little though, so like it's all about balance as well. It's also there's a perfect starting point. I mean, if you're used to eating KFC every day, maybe like just cut it out and go like maybe once or twice a week though. So it's all about finding a perfect balance in which you can holistically improve your lifestyle. Completely, man. Don't go from zero to 100. I love that. Just take that first step and don't wait for tomorrow. Make today the first day, day one. I love that. Day one of the new me. Don't wait for a new year. I'm going to send you on your way and hope that you're going to be really, really easy on our Zoe. So, Ashwin, you can go over to our workout space. Zoe, I'm going to put the question to you because I know you are very smart with your tech. So I'm going to ask you in a moment to tell me what tech you are using to get that wedding body on. But, of course, here's the good news for you guys at home. If you are wanting to embrace technology, you really can with Vodacom Enhance. But right now, I want to know from... Zozo, how do you get motivated and amped when you tackle your workout? What tech helps you? Oh, uh, well, listen, I wish I could say I was working out like I should, but I have not. But when I do work out, it's been making use of, you know, the music to keep me going, to keep me motivated. And, of course, a smartwatch, that always helps. So that's something that's very important. But, Ashwin, you're now here, and we're going to get into a bit of a workout. So what are you deciding to do for us today? Okay, so because, I mean, the spinning walks inspired us over the weekend, though, so, and it's summer approaching as well, so we're going to have a nice, fat burning calorie um, enhancing exercise today so we're going to be focused on high intensity workouts mm -hmm. so the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to be some jumping lunges for you Zoe I know you said that you haven't been in the gym lately you've been a bit busy so we're going to give you some alternatives okay, okay. so you know starting in the morning we have beginners, you have advanced, so we're just going to have a bit of both for everyone involved. Perfect. Okay, so I'll do the modified version. You're going to do, you're going to show us how we can take that workout to that next step. Perfect. So just to get that heart pumping, get that, cas that cardiovascular going, I'm going to start with jumping lunges, and you're going to do normal um, lunges. So the thing is, with the lunges, you can either go forward, or if you have some knee issues, you can always go, you can go lunges to the back. So that can be you over there. That okay. could be the alternative. So if the knees are niggly, step back. Definitely less pressure on that knee. So I'm going to start with the jumping lunges to just get that cardiovascular going, okay? okay? So let's go. And of course, we want to get the high calorie workouts in. We want to make sure that we stay in a bit of a calorie deficit or at least even out as we go into the festive season. Definitely. There we go. <sighs> Perfect. How was that for you? Whew, the high calorie always gets eh? the breath going. <laughs> it takes your breath away. <laughs> Definitely. Lovely stuff, though. Um, next thing that we're going to move on to, I'm going to be doing some burpees. Old Faithful, can you ever go wrong with it? So today, I came prepared. I've got you a young kit of all over here. Okay. So the alternative to me doing burpees, you're going to be doing a kettlebell swing. Okay. So I'll first go through it with you guys at home. If you do not have a kettlebell, you can literally take a fruit basket, anything that gets you going over here. So Even a pillow will work, a nice scatter cushion. That works as well, yeah. you know, anything. So the first thing over here, we're going to come up over here. And we're going to head nicely into a squat, up, squat, okay? So remember, go at your own pace. So I'll be doing the burpees and Zoe will be doing the kettlebell swings for us. Okay. So you're getting into, you're really getting the calorie workout. I'm doing the modified version. <laughs> so it's just a slow and controlled Excellent kettlebell stuff. swing. And I'll be eating the burpees, so. Now, when we set these workouts out, I know you're gonna lose your, you need to catch your breath again. 
but do you prefer doing it per reps or do you set a timer? What is your style of training? Um, when it comes to high intensity workouts, that's how predominantly do with time. But in terms of with weight training, I'll usually go for, for reps. For reps. Okay, well listen, Ashman's not going anywhere. He is going to stay with us as we do another bit of a workout. So stay tuned to your Feel Good Breakfast show. Oh, I absolutely love the fact that I dodged a bullet with that workout. Zoe, I love you so much, girl. Well done. I'm going to ask her to come over here so I can plug into how she motivates herself. And I say this because for me, there have always been these lovely little kind of life hacks that work in the health space. And the music is where it begins and ends. I need to have the right kind of playlist in my ear. Zozo, come in here. I know you've been on a journey. So first of all, well done. Thank you for, for taking that one for the team. It is a very difficult thing when you've got to embrace a long-term fitness journey. And you've done so well with kind of Picking particular tools you've used, online apps that have really helped you, what is that go-to? What gets you going? We know Ashman said it was the music for him, the playlist. What is the thing that motivates you? Is it tracking your progress? How do you get that right? I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's how you feel, and it's something that's so weird, but you need to do a workout in order to get energy, and you sometimes need that energy to just get going. Yes. So it's a bit of a tricky one to get going at times, but the minute you do that, it just gives you that boost you need. It, it releases those endorphins. It makes you feel good. And you don't have to do the big thing if you, I mean, I'm talking from someone where it's hard to restart, yeah. and that's where I'm at now. So it's also a case of, you know, instead of going for the 30 minute run that I was able to do so easily not too long ago, go for a 30 minute walk. Yeah. It's still movement at the end of the day. Uh, completely, and then walk a little bit further tomorrow yes. and do it again the next day. I absolutely love you. Thank you so much for motivating us this morning. And here's the great deal. On a very exciting note, Vodacom are giving you guys the chance to win three thousand rand so they offer a wide range of fitness devices cooking appliances we've spoken about the value of an air fryer and of course subscriptions through their enhanced features so you can have that trainer in your corner but we want to know from you guys to earn this prize which one would you choose to help you on your health and wellness journey would you choose an air fryer a smartwatch or a subscription to Apple Music for that playlist. Share your answer with us on Expresso's Facebook, X or Instagram pages and include that all important hashtag enhance with Vodacom. And the T's and C's can be found on our website, uh, expressoshow.com. All the best of luck when we return. We delve into Black Friday and then of course Richard Sturton is here to perform just for you. Kusanzi, enhance what you love, add more of what you need to your contract. Choose from a range of enhanced options in store or online. Further together, Vodacom. Look, not every day may go your way, but we've got something to lift your spirits right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. You can win a thousand rand cash weekly by going with Albany, the perfect bread in an imperfect world. First up, feel the freshness, and then enter by heading over to the Expresso Socials onto our Facebook page, our X, and our Instagram pages, and answer a very easy question. Look at it. Oh, wow. Now, make sure you include the hashtag MyPerfectAlbany in your answer to win big. Now, the competition closes on the 8th of December, and your T's and C's do apply. Oh, finally.
<laughs> Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. You're just in time because we're in the kitchen and it's Woolies Black Friday with new deals every single week. And this week, Woolworths is spoiling us with deals that is ideal for everyone looking for easy lunch and dinner solutions. So listen up to this. Yeah, look, we, we've, all, we've spoken many times about the, the two chicken. The yeah. rotisserie chickens are a big thing. I think there are many of us that absolutely love it. But let's get into the nitty gritty here because we've got some beautiful, beautiful uh, options. So rewards members buy two tin roof ice creams or two rotisserie chickens for only a hundred. Are you going to give it a go? I'm going to give it a go. I'll go for it because she was very trepidatious about cutting this chicken. So I was I was willing to to give it a go. Uh, I'm normally like I'll just get stuck oh, in it eh, because too. we don't want to waste any of it. TV now. Um, because it's so delicious. You can use your hands. I saw you sanitize. You're you're all right. Okay, so let's get into the deal here. Chickens. Two of them, rotisserie, absolutely delicious for 170 rand. Ooh. That is really good. That's almost less than an uncooked chicken. And that is either two tin roof ice creams or two rotisserie chickens or one of each for only 170 rand. I love this. You can mix and match. Beautiful. This offer is valid from today up until the 5th of November. T's and C's apply. I would remember that you, I would uh, recommend that you go early. Okay, so if you're going to go to your favorite Woolies, go early. Uh, you know what? I feel like I'm going to get very stuck in here cutting this chicken. I know you've got some music to take care of. Oh, thank but, you so much. But you know what? Mm. The, the, the Woolies chickens on a Sunday, that's been our go-to deal. You buy your yeah, two rotisserie yeah. chickens for 170. So I love that this is now beyond just the Sunday special, yes. but we're also incorporating the tin roof dairy ice cream. Now you can visit Woolies' Black Friday hub on woolworths.co.za and you can also view the exclusive Black Friday deal. Okay, I'm gonna go Kay. and chat to Richard and find out which piece he would like. Okay, out of this I'll picket. sort this out <laughs> for us. And those are your Black Friday deals. They've got a deal for every single one of us. Let me get cutting. Now you can see how excited I am by the size of the smile on my face. Welcoming him onto this espresso stage. Feels like it's long overdue since the last time we saw him. He is back. Richard Sturton is here to blow us away. He's a South African born and bred singer songwriter who has gone global. Based in London mostly, but of course we do know him from winning The Voice South Africa season one. He put himself on the map and he hasn't stopped. Oh, buddy, I feel like you've expanded. You're looking fantastic. Oh, thank Fit you. and healthy thank and strong. You. How are you, bud? I'm good. Thank you so much. So excited to be back in South Africa. I've missed it a lot. The sunlight is a lot more scarce in the UK. So <laughs> definitely capitalizing on the free vitamin D because you have to buy tablets that yeah, size. Exactly, <laughs> dude. Uh, here is your plug-in, but you are still very much representing who you have always been. So what is the journey to the UK been like? This was obviously done to take that next step up. How does that look in your world? Well, it's been an interesting journey. I think I, I was obviously on The Voice and, you know, we had three weeks to produce an album and then toured for 18 months. But I think my journey has been like, I wanted to discover who I am as an artist. And that's been the path. Uh, we went, I moved to Liverpool in 2019. And uh, I was literally busking on the street for money. So you literally put your guitar case out. I wrote like my name. Like all the greats have, man. Exactly. So I wrote my name in chalk, put a little uh, chalkboard down there and you just play for two hours, three hours at a time and just hope that people throw some cash in there so you can eat in the, in, at the end of the day. But for me, it's just about finding my sound, eh? I think I just wanted to find who I was as an artist, because, you know, winning a show, it shows you can sing, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're an artist. It's not the so, brand, yeah. Exactly. Sure. So I wanted to find my sound, find my narrative, so that essentially I can grow with, grow with my audience and my listeners. Um You've got new music out now, mm -hmm. and I, I hope this is going to give us a good taste of what that sound is. I know it's going to continue to evolve as you grow up and grow within the space and, and expand, as I said, that brand. What is Rough Justice about? What informs the song? So Rough Justice, I mean, I'm heading towards 30. It feels like after 25, it's a slippery <laughs> slope, but it's kind of a bit of existentialism and, you know, reflection on, on relationships. And, you know, it's whether it's personal, whether it's family, whether it's just your mates or whether it's a lover, it's, it's kind of taking a step back and, and reflecting on where you put your time. And um, the one line is, you know, um, I'm sorry for asking, I've just got to know, did your evenings add up the way you wanted? You know, and we all make decisions in our life. And in relationships, you know, it's, there's two things that are out of your control. It's receiving love and it's time, right? So you can wow. give love. But regardless of that, time marches on. So if you aren't, you know, being reciprocated in your relationships, it's kind of like a reflective thing. Like, value yourself, put your, put your time into places where 
people love you and uh, yeah it's meant to be uplifting it's quite a deeper narrative yeah but, but no, it's meant but to be uplifting we need it we need the words those of us who lack the creativity the emotional language rely on you to give us those words to process and it sounds like you've been doing a lot of processing buddy i'm going to let you go to that stage so you can get your head in the game i cannot believe that we have an opportunity to connect with this man right now at this part of his incredible journey if you want to feel where his heart is right now well he's going to leave it out on the stage and Undoubtedly, here is Richard Sturton with Long Gone. Last few years we've been loving under the weather. Cut my tongue just to save your face, but we get hurt. Thought that we'd be there by now Somehow it would all work out Hanging on to love we'd found But it's long gone Couldn't tell the smoke from clouds Promises and broken vows Who you were to who you now Guess you're long gone One more chance after one more chance guess I'm blinded heard him greet you with my last name I'm reminded of everything we aren't everything we once were everything I gave everything you watch burn every given day every moment upturn how it got away the years they never return thought that we'd be there by now from clouds promises and broken vows who you were to who you know guess you're long gone but there was a bright side years in a gold light where loving you felt right they'll live on in my mind maybe it was just time and all she had to write So hold on, you'll be fine Without us by your side Thought that we'd be there by now Somehow it would all work out Hanging on to love we'd found But it's long gone And couldn't tell the smoke from clouds Promises and broken vows
Welcome back. Let's continue our focus on health and wellness, but with a financial perspective. Between expensive gyms, healthy food, which can push up the budget, access to mental health resources, the cost of achieving a healthy lifestyle can add up pretty quickly. But there are also ways to do it without breaking the bank. So in our Money Matters chat today, we are going to unpack where we are willing to spend our money in the name of health and wellness. And we've asked Ashwin to join because you've kind of made this your purpose. So I'm interested to know from your perspective. And so you've had some, some really cool journeys in the fitness space. So I'd love to get your take as well. And you're generally the most even-headed when it comes to managing our finances. So thank you so much for being here. Um, so I'm gonna put this to you, Ashwin, and be cheeky first up. Are gyms and personal trainers worth the cost. What's the value add, do you think? Because surely the answer must be yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't have any choice in that answer. Eh? <laughs> but yeah, I definitely do see the benefits um, and it definitely is worth it though. There is no price that you can put on your health. Yeah. So if you're going to save now, you definitely might pay the price later in life. I love that. It's an investment. It is an investment, and it's, it's worth it if you're willing to put the work in it. There Everyone can have a membership, and that membership can just take off. You can go to your personal trainer and then go stuff your face afterwards, but if you're not going to be... You're wasting your own money if you're not willing to put in the work. So you've got to be accountable. Yes. I think that's a big part of this journey. Healthy food can be well, inaccessible to a lot of people. It can be expensive but there are ways of getting around that. What is your opinion when it comes to the debate around healthy food? Is it something that's only reserved for those who have the bank? Definitely not. Like, definitely, like, depends, though. Like, loads of people, like, where you shop, it's a big thing, like, looking for specials, we have Black Friday coming up as well. Like, <laughs> there's always something happening, though, so um, it's easy to tap in as an excuse, as in, like, only the rich can afford it, or... But like definitely there's ways and walls like in order to, to make a healthy habit. I was gonna say, hey, egg whites are fine, but eggs obviously are a bit of a question at the moment, but there are ways of doing it. How do you get that balance right? Because you're very particular about your diet when you need to be. Well, I think only lazy people will find healthy food expensive because healthy food requires you to think, how am I gonna put this meal together and, uh, and, and actually do it? Effort. Whereas if you're lazy, it's just so much easier to order food for the whole family that naturally is the unhealthy and cheaper option because you didn't wanna put the effort in. Mm. Um, just for myself, I think what helps is to, to do a bit of a meal plan. We, we plan what we're gonna shop for the week ahead and then you also know there's no wastage. That's exactly right. And that's been a big um, pressure point for me is realizing now that I've gone on this kind of diet restricted kind of, it's been a game changer in terms of how much we waste more than how much we consume when we are spending so much money on food. We know that we are doing this, we want the body to support a healthy mind and the two work hand in hand. So maybe Ashwin, I can ask you because you've probably invested a lot looking at that physique, um, but what has been the best investment you've made towards your mental health? Ooh, that's a very good question though, like mentally. So obviously it requires a lot of things before that though. So as we mentioned earlier, it's also like discipline, accountability, all of those things though. So once you start to put yourself first, it's like no matter how you're feeling, as soon as you just get yourself there, like mentally, like you add that responsibility to yourself and you just feel better immediately though. Because I've realized responsibility and accountability are empowering. They don't restrict you, they actually push you further. Definitely. Is there a go-to, is there a mantra, is there something that you've relied on for your mental health? What has been your biggest investment? I think it's also just allowing yourself time to rest. I think, you know, we are so big on you have to do give 100% of push, this. But push, push, push. Push, 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 but the resting is also important. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Quieten the mind. Yes. I like that. Well, we're going to hopefully find a balance between those two objectives now. As the two of you get sent off to go uh, put yourselves through your paces, it starts with that. Just a little investment in your health and well-being is one of the best investments, rewarding, that you can make. 
and to help you save money on your healthy groceries to get that budget balance right, I really do suggest, I say it a lot, sign up for a Nedbank My Goals account. There is so much woven into it to, to add value. You can enjoy the benefit of getting cash back no matter where you shop or whatever you are buying and you can make choices about how to spend that extra income. And to find out more about the Nedbank My Goals suite of accounts, because there's something for everyone, no matter what phase of life you're in, you can visit nedbank.co.za. But as we know, this fitness and health and wellness this journey starts with day one and today is day one for us so go and take that first step right now Mabel check this with a my Golds premium account you get 12 free airport lounge visits 12 yeah God, David, when are you busy planning your next getaway during office hours ah, a man Well, our day one is here, and our, we, our one for the day to put us through our paces. Ashwin, we are ready for round two of our workout. I love that you are doing the more intensified version, and you're allowing me to do the modified version. <laughs> Definitely. We all need to start somewhere, so I'll be the guinea pig for today. Okay. I'll take the burn, so yeah. So the next exercise that we're going to go with now is that we will be doing normal squats. Basic, normal, one of the best exercises you can find. And then I'll be doing the pop squats just to get that cardiovascular going. Okay, so I'm just going to go down, do gentle little squats. Perfect. Perfect form as well, Zoe. Love it. Okay. And I'll be doing the pop squats, so it's in, out. Okay. Definitely a lot more explosive. Now, why is it so important for us to do these explosive workouts, to get the heart rate up, to get the blood pumping? It's just, it's very important in terms of losing them calories, you know. I mean, for summer, we all want to be in that perfect condition as well, though. So it's good to start your morning as well, like on a high note. Just get the blood pumping. Very good. Okay. So round one was squats. Round two. Okay. Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay. I'll be doing mountain climbers because I know you ate them so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you'll just be doing, um, you'll be on your hands and then you'll just be going side to side with each leg, okay? Okay. Pretty simple. So, mountain climbers and some side to side. Perfect. Okay. Okay. That's perfect. Zoe, keep it up. Love it. There we go. Okay, next up. So, we're going to stay on the floor. Just need you to stand up though, you know, keep it going. So, you'll be in the plank position and I'll be doing some dynamic planks. Okay. What's the difference? What, what is a, di a dynamic plank? So, it's just involving more than one movement though. So, um, you'll be incorporating your entire body in this exercise. Okay. So, you will just be in a normal plank over here. And then I'll be going up on the one arm, up onto the other, and okay. back down over here. So with the dynamic plank, we work in every single part of our body. So with the plank, we incorporate in our core. With the dynamic plank, we incorporate in our shoulders, arms, back. So yeah. Okay. So you're doing some of, I know those as commandos. So the dynamic plank, I love that every fitness instructor loves giving you that exercise. <laughs> Perfect. What's the longest you can plank? Ooh, Have I you ever timed yourself? No, I was too busy eating. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And one more to finish off our workout. Okay, so we'll continue in incorporating that core. So over here, you'll be doing just on your hands, shoulder taps. I hope there's no other word for that. Yeah. <laughs> so there's too many words going around in the fitness industry. So you'll be doing shoulder taps and I'll be doing inchworms, but I'll modify it with adding shoulder taps to it. Okay, okay. So I'll just do the regular shoulder taps and you'll be doing the inchworms. Perfect. So we're going over here. One, two, three, four, and then up again. Remember guys, you want to keep that core engaged. That's perfect. So you want to keep it as still as possible so you can engage that core. Ah, oh, there we go. How difficult on a scale of one to 10, and now you have to be absolutely honest, do you find it to talk and do a workout? <laughs> be honest. <laughs> I'm trying my hardest over here. You make it look easy. <laughs> one I'm to doing ten. the easy version. You are really going at it. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how tough is it to talk while doing your workout? Oof. Easy, 1.25. <laughs> 
See, he's a true fitness buff, and Ashwin, it's great having you here. Lovely. Thank you. you for joining us, and thank you for being such a good sport, doing the high-intensity workout, but also showing our viewers that they are always a modified version, if that is where you are at. So I hope you enjoyed today's workout. Ashwin, where can we find you online? And, you know, you are a personal trainer, so if you need more clients, where can people reach you? Um, Instagram, Ash underscore Wilder. TikTok, Ash underscore Wilder as well. Keeping it simple, so yeah. Simple and easy and straight to the point. Oh, well done, Zozo. You are a warrior poet this morning. We absolutely love you. Ashwin, thank you for helping us kickstart day one. We are here for that. Well, we've got another performance from Richard Sturton on the way. Beautiful, emotional performance, no doubt, so stick around for that. Then, of course, we're going to broach the entertainment news. Many of us woke to the heartbreaking breaking news that Matthew Perry, the Friends star, had passed away. We'll get into that and some of the other major entertainment headlines in just a moment. Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso on S3. And we're going to dive into the world of entertainment news and catch up with what happened to the world of celebrities over the last weekend. And we're kicking it off with some extremely sad news. Yeah, heartbreaking. I think for, for many of my generation that grew up watching Friends back in the day, this was obviously a hard blow. But you can only imagine for those that have connected to the incredible Matthew Perry, who has been on a journey. He has sadly passed away at the age of 54. So TMZ were the, one of the reports that we landed on. And they said the Troubled Star recently released a tell or memoir that I've started diving into, highlighting his battles with substance abuse, was found dead Saturday today in Los Angeles um, in the area in his home after an apparent drowning. Not more details or not many more details have been released at this stage, but the site said that Perry had played pickleball just before that, returned home and then sent his assistant on an errand and then he was found uh, by them unresponsive a couple of hours later, presumably having drowned in his bathtub. Um, and I think obviously the world around him, the entertainment world that has been I think very connected to his personal journey through, yeah. uh, I mean, he has been out of rehab, I think 15 times. He had to have 14 operations to repair his colon that actually burst and almost killed him as a result of his opioid abuse at the time. And that happened post an operation. Um, but when you look back at his incredible acting journey, which was kind of woven into that narrative in 1994, he hit the big time as Chandler Bing in Friends. And I think he was <laughs> the, the driest, funniest, man we had seen on TV and he was a perfect counterbalance for that cast. In fact, they said he was the hardest member to cast for Friends because no actors could walk that line, find that kind of funny balance, <laughs> excuse me. And of course, with that series, he went to the top, an incredible 234 episodes, becoming a pop cultural phenomenon and making each of those cast members superstars. And Perry was joined by Cox, Matt LeBlanc, Lisa Kudrow, David Schwimmer, and of course, the very famous Jennifer Aniston, all household names and impossibly wealthy. They made a huge amount of money, but it does really highlight the fact that what you see is not often what is going on behind the scenes. And he had gotten to the point where he even turned his house into a halfway house to help other sure. recovering addicts. That's how far he went down that path. So we are sending nothing but love and positive energy to his friends and most importantly to his family. Uh, Matthew Perry, rest in peace.
piece? Well, if you look at your own friendship circle, I think we all relate to a oh, character sure. or you use one of the characters of friends to describe your own friends. And I remember not too long ago, someone was asking me, what does your friend do? And I was like, you know what? I actually don't know. She's like the Chandler of the group. <laughs> we don't know what she does, but she's very successful. Yeah, and she's funny, man. And she is funny. Oh. Well, listen, Swifties, this is not the news you were hoping for. Sorry, Sadly, guys. Taylor Swift is not coming to South Africa because after an email was received by many South Africans seemingly teasing that Taylor Swift was headed to South Africa, the email read, we're entering a new era in 2024. Are you ready for it? Began the email. Oh. But then moving swiftly towards 2024, we're shaking off the year that was and heading into a whole new era of health, happiness and evolution. Evolved benefits continued the email. Now, if you're a Swifty fan and you know this, the era you are ready for, and it is the Swiftly, that would have mean, oh my word, she's coming, but that's not the case. Tick, tick, tick. However, uh -oh. big concerts then revealed that the lineup for what they call South Africa's ultimate musical festival will include Maroon 5 Yay! as the I'll headliner. Take it. How incredible is that? Maroon 5 will be joined by British band Keen oh, and brilliant. Italian artist Medusa and pop star Ava Max, as well as our very own Will Lindley and Loiso. How Ooh. incredible is that? Superstars, and I'm, I'm as excited about Loiso and Will being on that show. We've had them on our show as they kind of entered into this amazing uh, kind of season of their careers. That is awesome. Oh, well, this festival is taking place on the 31st Yay. of January in Cape Town and the 3rd of Feb in Johannesburg. Tickets will go on sale this Friday and you can find more details at calabashsouthafrica.co.za. Oh, my word. Adam Levine, please come on to our show. Adam, yes, please. please come. He's like my spirit animal. I absolutely love him. That is incredible. But like I say, to see Loiso, after what he's been doing over this last year, blowing up in America, absolute superstar on a global stage now, to have him come back and perform in what will no doubt be a sold out stadium in South Africa, that is special. But look at that lineup. Adam Levine, I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> Likewise, Faf de Klerk, I love you even more. And your speedo, buddy. Oh, so this weekend, once again, obviously, South Africa came together in just the most incredible way to back our boys in green and gold as they took on the All Blacks in that Rugby World Cup final and were Victoria, uh, victorious. But in true Faf style, he celebrated in the iconic speedo with a South African flag <laughs> as he met, well, just about every famous person in the world, including the great Roger Federer, who came to attend the game with his South African scarf as well, showing his South African connection. Um, the Rugby World Cup did poke a lot of fun at Fuff, um, posting him in the speedo in just about every space possible, captioning four years apart. Reckon they've been washed. <laughs> I hope so. He's probably got a few pairs, don't yeah. worry. Um, but we are here for the Fuff fever. And in case you missed it, South Africa, of course, bagged their fourth Rugby World Cup, the first team in history to do that with their 12-11 win over the All Blacks. And as a nation, we could not be prouder. Mm, super proud indeed. Well, that was your entertainment news from our news desk for today. But the conversation doesn't end there. Our social platforms are always up to date and what's happening on the social streets. So you're welcome to follow us at expressoshow.com. And that is where you can find all of the latest news and perhaps share your own news for sure. with us. All right, and of course, um, there has been an update to a particular story that came in a little bit uh, late. And this, I think, got us so terrified, we structured an entire show around people being duped mm -hmm. online. And we were talking about catfishing, and of course, this came to a head with an impersonator pretending to be a doctor. And it showed just how easy it is to be able to do this. Now, he had actually taken on the mantle, the, he had stolen the identity of a young medical student at the time. Well, we were worried at um, the possible repercussions of this kind of um, opportunity, the fact that it was so easy for him to be able to do this. 
but he is not going to get away with it, it seems. Well, I have the story here in front of me. The bogus Dr. Matthew Lani was arrested. Now, earlier this month, we did report on Dr. Matthew Lani, a social media doctor who was caught in his web of lies. And on Sunday, he was arrested at the Helen Joseph Hospital. And according to the Gauteng Health Department, Lani was nabbed as he was entering the hospital. The department spokesperson also confirmed that the hospital security detained him. So, of course, some serious things happening. I think that's where the lines get blurred, where, where you're doing things for popularity on social media and where actual people's health and wellness is, is at, at harm. Um, and this speaks to a much bigger trend within that social media space that could potentially be devastating um, when you think of the medical repercussions of what could have happened. So I think this goes out as a very stern warning to anyone who is going to play around in that space. You might think that being online is some kind of buffer, some insulation against the real world. You will get found out and caught. Um, and of course, Zoe's going to be taking care of the official news headlines. Um, and then in just a moment, I'll be diving into those sporting headlines. So much to catch up on in terms of the cricket, the rugby, and of course, a little bit of footballing action last night. And while the Proteas continue on their charge with a very impressive performance against Pakistan on Friday, the Springboks are indeed world champions. I'll get into some of those sporting highlights, the highs and the lows. And of course, we've got a new local cricket champion to announce as well. But first, let's bring you up to speed with all the latest that's been happening in and around the world with those news headlines. Thank you, Graham. Well, let's take a final look at today's headlines. The University of South Africa has approached the court for an urgent order to challenge the Minister of Higher Education, Bladem Zimande's decision to place the university under administration. The former rector of the University of Johannesburg, Iran Rensburg, has been appointed as administrator. UNISA said the minister's announcement was premature because there's still a review application before the court on the state of affairs at the university. UNIVISA says the minister's actions are in fact contempt of court because earlier this month the court prevented him from placing the university under administration. And staying with our local news, it's all systems go for some 717,350 matriculants expected to sit for their final examination across 6,898 centres today. That's as the 2013 National Senior Certificate examinations get underway. A total of 207 question papers, 72,500 invigilators and 52,500 markers will drive the examinations process. Basic Education Minister Angie Moseka said the, ad the figures are not mere statistics but embody the aspirations, dreams and relentless efforts of all grade 12 learners. And moving to news abroad, King Charles flies to Kenya tomorrow, his first visit as monarch to the Commonwealth nation. Charles is expected to tackle what is termed the more painful aspects of the UK's historic relationship with Kenya, namely the period of British rule, which ended in 1963. It was in Kenya in February 1952 that Charles' mother, the late Queen Elizabeth II, learned of the death of her father, King George VI, marking the start of her historic 70-year reign as British Queen and of the British Commonwealth of Nations. And thousands of people in Gaza have broken into warehouses and carried away relief supplies. The UN aid agency views this as a worrying sign that law and order is crumbling. Hamas's leader in Gaza, Yahya Sinwa, has meanwhile offered to release all Israeli hostages in exchange for Hamas prisoners in Israel. Hamas took more than 200 hostages to Gaza after attacking Israel earlier this month. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he didn't rule out such a possibility, but his main priority remained to destroy Hamas in Gaza. And while South African rugby fans are still basking in the glory of the Springboks' epic victory over New Zealand in the Rugby World Cup, tennis fans were also in for a pleasant surprise at the final on Saturday evening. Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic, two legends of tennis, proved that their second love after tennis was undoubtedly rugby, as both were seen cheering in the stands. Federer was wearing green and gold, a scarf supporting South Africa, his mother's land of birth, and Djokovic was seated next to pop star Rita Ora. 
Federer even visited the boxes' changing rooms afterwards to have a few beers. Well, that's where I leave your morning headlines. Let's take a final look at your sport. After that build-up, we've got to start with this story. The story in sport, the story in rugby. In a thrilling final at the Stade de France, the Springboks secured their second consecutive Rugby World Cup title, narrowly defeating a 14-man New Zealand 12-11, another one-pointer. Andre Pollard made the difference, four penalties, sealing their fourth championship history-making moment in that. So despite a red card for captain Sam Kane, the All Blacks showed resilience and bravery. They earned a lot of kudos. Uh, Bowden Barrett, in fact, scoring the first ever try against the, against the Springboks in a World Cup final, but missed conversions and penalties, costing New Zealand in the end. It really was a game of millimetres, and the Springboks now hold the record as the most successful nation in men's rugby World Cup history. Four titles to underline it. Now, of course, we've got another World Cup playing out, and it's heating up now. India's Mohammed Shami delivered a masterclass bowling performance, resulting in a 100-run victory over England, leaving the defending champions in a very precarious position as they chase that rundown or that run-in towards the semi-finals. So England's chase of 230 runs, ending at 129, all out in 34.5 overs. And skipper Roy Sharma's 87, helping to set that platform. But India reaching only two. 229 for Naim, a seemingly modest total, but enough to overcome England on a very challenging pitch, it seems, with a flawless record now of six wins under the belt. India virtually assured of their semi-final berth. This victory places India at the top of the rankings. The Proteas, after their one wicket win over Pakistan on Friday, now in second. And New Zealand, who we face on Wednesday, and Australia in third and fourth positions, respectively. Um, the big guns are showing their worth. Likewise, when we bring it back home for more cricket action and Western Province did it. They secured the CSA One Day Cup title with a resounding 107 run victory over the Northwest Dragons in their final at Newlands in Cape Town. So Western Province's uh, dominant campaign included an unbeaten run in the round robin phase and then the standout moment from the, the game itself, a record breaking fifth wicket partnership of 199 runs. Incredible. And that was between Captain Fantastic Carl Bereno, who we had on the show, and then player of the match, Mitlali Mpongwana. Congratulations, gents both scoring centuries in the process. This propelled Western Province to a formidable 307 for eight. And despite a valiant effort from the Dragons skipper, Vian Lubber, who scored 70, the loss of wickets at regular intervals and critical moments, I think, led to their downfall, getting bowled out for 200. Well done, Via Pierre. And then let's round it off with football in Erling Haaland while he is hitting his straps. And I don't think he's in full pace yet. He was the star of the show. As Man City secured a commanding 3-0 win over their old foes, Manchester United at Old Trafford. Silent scoring twice, first from the penalty spot and then with a header just after half time. Could have had a few more as well. And then he also set up for Foden for City's third goal. I'm sure Foden happy to make his mark now in the sky blue. This victory propelling City to within two points of Premier League leaders at the moment after they win on Friday. Tottenham, despite their slow start to the season, City seems to be coming good, while United's fifth defeat in 10 league games, leaving them in eighth place, 11 points adrift of the leaders. And the Glazer brothers facing some pressure right now now. But that's where we leave our sport for this momentous day. I'm going to say once again, congratulations, world champions. Let's uh, hone in on the traffic now. Let's start in KZN, where there is a stationary truck on the N3 eastbound. That's after the ramp from Linfield Park. The left lane is closed, so please drive carefully. Expect some congestion and slow traffic times. Moving to the Mother City in Cape Town, there's congestion, as always, on the N7 northbound at Bosman's Dam. Expect delays and allow for more travel time. But beyond that, it seems like things are moving. Let us know if you see anything different. Let's delve into the weather. So first, some news to get through first, and the SA Weather Service has now warned that very cold, wet and windy conditions are now expected over the Eastern Cape, KwaZulu-Natal, the Free State, and Pumalanga, Gauteng, Limpopo and the Northwest 
today. A bit of a sting in the tail, it seems. Now, the Weather Service has also issued three level two warnings for today. Disruptive snow leading to closing of passes, dangerous driving conditions, and loss of vulnerable livestock is expected over the extreme western parts of KwaZulu-Natal and the extreme eastern parts of the Free State. And then severe thunderstorms with very damaging winds and heavy downpours and large amounts of small hail are expected over the northeastern parts of the Northern Cape and then the southwestern parts of the Northwest. And then damaging winds leading to difficulty in navigation at sea expected between Alexander Bay and Plettenberg Bay. And then finally, extremely high fire danger conditions expected over parts of the Northern Cape right now. Those winds are going to pump Northwest and the Cedarburg local municipalities talk about the effects of climate change. Ignore it if you will at your peril. All right, that's our weather news done and dusted. Let's get into some of the temperatures that you can expect in your neck of the woods. Some beautiful days ahead with some crazy weather thrown in, so please be careful out there. But let's see if we can temper that storm with a beautiful view of this particular neck of South African woods, uh, literally. Um, this was sent in by one of our favorites, Louise Cherry. Good morning, Louise. She said this. Good morning, Expresso family. Bit of sunshine after such beautiful weather. It's freezing cold here in Alberton. Had a bit of rain, but not much. We really need more rain. Have a great day. Oh, I can remember those skies. You can feel the chill. I know it's a bit late in the year to be feeling those chills, but you've certainly warmed us up with that beautiful picture. Louise Cherry, you get pick of the day. Thank you so much. Well, remember, you can always share your sunrise views with us. Our number is 063-408-8863. We are taking the quickest of breaks on your Feel Good Breakfast show. When we get back, we'll take a look at how you can support sanitation in the schools, as well as another performance from Richard Sturton. That is still on its way. To the brave hearts who persevere against all odds, we salute you. Along with Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave, we're inspiring hope across South Africa this Hopetober. Stand a chance to win 1,500 Rand cash every weekday by answering the weekly Hopetober competition question on Expresso's Facebook, Twitter or Instagram pages throughout the month of October using hashtag Hopetober and hashtag sponsors of Brave. T's and C's can be found on Expresso show.com
Now this one uh, terrifies me. This one gets me really excited. This one has me in turmoil. This is probably one of the most emotional conversations we're gonna have and thankfully it is happening all the time now and I'm here for that. Let's hone in on the toilet. Just a toilet. When taken care of, it is as precious as gold. And I mean that in the context of our socioeconomic journey. We need to connect those dots. Precious because they prevent disease and help keep children in school and they also develop a sense of self-worth. It's a basic human right. And this is why Domestos has been on a mission to win the war on unsafe sanitation and poor hygiene, to restore faith and trust and dignity. Now, to date, they've provided cleaner and safer sanitation for over eight million learners in South Africa. That is incredible. But the journey is only just getting started. They have goals to reach and to serve to the rest of the world because they're looking at us right now. And joining me this morning to share a very exciting journey ahead is Mandisa Mbenenge, the Domestus Purpose Lead. And I love that word, purpose. Yes. Mandisa, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for representing what you represent. Uh, congratulations, world champion, as well, <laughs> because lest we forget. Um, but this is such a difficult campaign to engage with, because back in the day, no one would touch this. Yes. No one would touch child abuse. No one would touch sanitation. No one would touch toilets, because come on. Yeah. But they are gold, because they are so precious to us. Talk us through the angle, the action this year. Where's your headspace at? Well, actually, I might, may as well stand up, because <laughs> you literally <laughs> said everything. But look, as the, as the number one uh, toilet cleaning brand in the world, for us, the sanitation space was something that was quite organic to get into because it's actually the core of why our brand exists, right? Yeah, yeah. But if we, if, we, if we look at the value of toilets, for, for you and me, yeah, toilets are a convenience. Don't even think about it. You don't think about it at all. It doesn't come up in conversation. If I want to go to the toilet, I simply stand up and I walk to the toilet and I relieve myself, right? But there are many reasons why toilets are valuable and should be treated like gold, um, right? The, at, at the very core of it, or fundamentally, they're good for our health and well-being. Yeah. Necessary yes. for our they, health and well-being. They are necessary for our health and well-being, right? They prevent diseases, right? They keep us clean. Um, they keep us healthy. But another angle, of course, that you can look at at why toilets are valuable is, is primarily because they also help protect the environment, right? Because they manage, they manage waste. But if we bring it back or draw it closer to school sanitation, there are also a number of reasons why it's crucial. Maybe let's look at just two, right? Um, health and hygiene. We've yeah. spoken about it um, in brief, but actually one of the reasons why it's so crucial and valuable to have toilets in schools is because it actually pr helps prevent diseases and therefore it reduces absenteeism Keeps kids in school. In school which is what they are there for, to learn. So it helps aid that learning environment because they're not sick. You'll be shocked that one in 10 people, children, globally, will actually not go to school because they don't have any sanitation facilities, which is a really scary stat if you look and at it. And perfectly understandable. I, 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 for me, I think where this came to be, obviously when we lost the life, and, we, and that many lives have been yes. lost. Yes. And we love to just kind of set it aside, maybe as a survival mechanism, mm -hmm. you know, denial. Um, so that when a young boy had fallen and drowned in a pit latrine that was the same age as my young boy, and it, it's killing me now even to, to say it out loud, let alone yeah. to think about it, that broke me. But the fact that there are kids out there that don't know how to use a toilet because they have never encountered a perfectly functioning toilet in their entire life. Yeah, yeah. The whole baseline needs to move, and it feels like things are shifting. We're changing the conversation from just putting the, the toilets in, because you've done that on a massive scale. I know you, you are only getting started in that sense, but now it's about taking ownership. Yes. How does that child feel like that's their toilet? That school then has ownership of that. That speaks to how the child feels about themselves and what they are worth. Exactly. Why is this so important to get that across? What you've seen in the schools where this has worked, what difference has it made? Look, I think if, if you look at 
how we started, right? Obviously, it's been quite a number of years, over 10 years, um, in this war against it's sanitation. War. It is a war. It is a war. Um, and we, initially, when we started, it was, we, you know, we got into it because of infrastructure. We started building toilets. We started refurbishing toilets. But then something clicked. And it was almost like, well, OK, we're providing toilets to children who previously didn't have the benefit of having toilets in their schools. Um, but we need to teach them. We need to change their behavior. Change right? the culture. Change the culture. And that was when Unilever, with the Department of Education, then created the National Schools Hygiene Program. So we started doing the behavioral change in the learners themselves. And you know, there's a, there's a way to go. Um, because in our daily interactions with these children in school, in schools, you actually see the lack of knowledge, but you also see the eagerness for them to be able to learn. You see how grateful the they joy. are that we've got toilets and now we're being taught how to use them. So our National Schools Hygiene Program then obviously came into effect, but there was still a little gap. Yeah, there was still a little gap. And that was around the maintenance of facilities, OK? Now we're getting to the crux, um, you know, of kind of like the macro issue yeah, um, yeah. around the sanitation crisis. Because, yes, we acknowledge um, infrastructure is important. Infrastructure is quite key. But, right, through our Cleaner Toilets Brighter Future program, we started teaching the cleaners how to maintain and actually clean their facilities. Take but yeah. do you know what? Every day, all around the world, there are thousands of toilets that are being built. Like, in the world over. But what actually happens if, if you don't clean it, if you don't take care of it, if you don't maintain it at all? Yeah, it's right? redundant, yeah. It becomes dirty. It becomes unusable, essentially. Then we start going into the a visual yeah. sort of cycle. And then what happens is that those toilets are lost to neglect. And that's what we call toilet loss. It's a bird. Right? Yeah, for sure. Or, or so they're toilets, off, yeah. but they're lost. So toilet loss. And unless we can address toilet loss, this fight against uh, sanitation will never be over. Um, and I love the fact that, yes, we can look at it from a very complex socio-economic yeah. standpoint, but you can also look at it from a very simple, practical element here, because it's 100%. just a toilet. And it just needs to be looked after. And what you get out of pushing this energy and these resources through that gateway, yeah. It's as yet untapped because we just don't know how far this is going to go in terms of those kids, that generational knock-on effect once this culture sets in and it's there. All of this speaks of a maturation, a natural maturation to get to this point of being able to be practical now. Mm. We're not just selling the emotion of it yes. anymore. We are doing the work and that is 100%. great. That being said, how can we help? What's the work that we need to do to aid you? You're a consumer-driven company. As much as all of this is great as a social investment, you still need to make this sustainable and work. That's where the customer steps in. How do we help you? It's quite simple, really. Toilet loss is actually addressable. Um, the very first thing that I would say is that people just need to value the toilet you know, as the sort of precious resource um, that it is, yeah. right? That's at its core. That that's at its core. But there, you know, there's a there's an illustration that I read um, actually from the UN. They make an illustration of a hummingbird, okay. right? Small bird, um, but in fires, what it does is it goes, it gets water, small beak. And it helps put out fires, um, like forest fires, when it, um, you know, their forest, uh, their forest fires, which is a big crisis in many We're parts of the, the world. We're talking about the smallest bird. We're yeah. talking about a hummingbird. But actually, that small role that it is playing is helping making, to make a difference for a bigger crisis that's yeah. there, which are the forest fires, right? And, and that's exactly how it is with this crisis that we're looking at now, right? So we're calling on consumers and we're saying, take a stand. Take a stand with us, Domestos, as a brand. And it's a simple act of choosing Domestos by purchasing Domestos, which can actually um, help make you make a contribution. Because by choosing Domestos, 
you help support safer school sanitation. So it's a really critical thing because we can then continue to teach learners about the value of toilets, about them taking care of toilets, and that will help future generations, and it will actually even uh, foster healthier communities. Uh, you know, you get movements and campaigns that sit at, at, at that emotional level, that roll around when we get that day of, of kind of acknowledgement, a day of the year devoted to the toilet. Mm. That's great. Yeah. This speaks to something else entirely for me, and this is a massive kudos to you and your team because Thank the you. 10 years of work are now bearing the fruit that we need, yeah. and I think society will understand and take on board just how important the simple little little, wonderful little resource the toilet is, yeah. it is actually gold. We're going to walk a long path together over the course of the next few months, which I cannot wait for. But this Expresso family, this team, our broader family is yeah. behind your purpose 100%. Thank you very much. So thank you. Thank you for being so eloquent with explaining the way that we can jump on board and help. I was going to say take a stand, but no, take a seat, okay, or take a stand. I don't mind. Support safer school sanitation. It's as simple as that by choosing Domestos. And when you choose Domestos, you're not only choosing, obviously, a product that will clean your own home at the best level possible, but you're directly supporting programs that contribute to safer school sanitation for over one million learners per year. A million will be helped by you. Thank you, Graham. Well, listen, we are taking the quickest of breaks on your Feel Good Breakfast show. When we get back, we're going to continue celebrating the Springboks, and we have a performance from Richard Sturton still on its way. Look, not every day may go your way, but we've got something to lift your spirits right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. You can win a thousand rand cash weekly by going with Albany, the perfect bread in an imperfect world. First up, feel the freshness, and then enter by heading over to the Expresso Socials onto our Facebook page, our X, and our Instagram pages, and answer a very easy question. Look at it. Oh, wow. Well, make sure you include the hashtag MyPerfectAlbany in your answer to win big. Now, the competition closes on the 8th of December, and your T's and C's do apply. Oh, finally. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Well, oh, yes. Welcome back. Welcome back. It is your feel-good breakfast show. And, I mean, have you recovered from the weekend? No, I will never recover from this weekend. Um, I, I was spent before the final, actually. And I think, like many of us, I, I felt kind of emotionless during many moments in that game, but certainly not afterwards. An incredible moment in sporting history in in all history, I think, because it seemed to tie so many threads together. But yes, we are the Rugby World Cup champions for 2023. 
forced one under the belt. So we wanted to hear from you guys how you are feeling, what went wrong, what went right. How did you put it all in perspective? So we've got some voice notes that came through. So let's take a listen to our first voice note. Good morning, Expresso. Good morning. What did I think about the Rugby World Cup final? It was everything that we wanted to watch and more. And what did I think what went wrong? The fact that New Zealand almost won us and what went right, that we won them by one point. <laughs> it was an incredible final. It could have gone either way, but once again, the Springboks showed their worth and what they were playing for their country. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, they couldn't have made it more nail-biting. And the fact that that all-black side kind of hit their straps, as they did in the, the first match, we played them before the World Cup, when they were a man down, that's when they showed their strength and metal. Yo, they put us through the ringer. Um, let's hear another one. Uh, good morning. Uh, yeah, hey. <laughs> According to me... <laughs> yeah, nothing went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> nothing went wrong. I'm just happy for the guys who won the game, yeah. Boke, go Boke. Go Boke. Indeed. <laughs> that voice there just encapsulates, I think, how a lot of people are feeling today. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he's gotten up yet. I think he has just been on his, on his back for the entire time. I feel you, dude. I'm emotionally spent. I have nothing left to give. And that's, I also have the same feeling Yeah, I wanted us to be pushed because you want to know that you've earned the right to beat the way, you know, to, to have that mantle as the best team in the world by beating the best. Absolutely brilliant response. Uh, let's take a look at our, our social platforms and see who weighed in on the conversation. So Shane says, all that can be said is that we have literally proven a point that we are the champions and that the cup belongs to South Africa. Shane, incredible. yeah, yeah. Then Dolores saying, well done, Boca. Good morning, breakfast team. We did it. Uh -huh. So proud to be South Africa. We did it. <laughs> I um, love that. Queen saying, yo, what a nail-biting <laughs> experience. The Boca united us once again. Congratulations. Oh, Aww. man. And look at them. They were united in one goal, in one dream that started many years ago for these players, and certainly for that coaching staff. So much pressure on that young man's shoulders, and he walked that, that PR line beautifully, global superstar, but none of them let the bigger picture overshadow what they needed to do on that field. And to have our president, Cyril Ramaphosa, there to punctuate, to underline this incredible moment, all the better. What I loved the most was how Alkeen, the prayers was to get a hug from Faf de Klerk. I think he had to get there. <laughs> there was a lot of love. There was so much positive sentiment and that brotherly love, the bromance around this World Cup was absolutely incredible. So to everyone of the South Africans that got out there, thank you for being there. And for every South African back home that left nothing out on that field emotionally, well done. We are the world champions. Oh, yes, Mzanzi, welcome back to it. Let us entertain you with this superstar right here. I'm so excited for this one because he's joining us once again, the amazing singer, the songwriter, Richard Sturden, in the building. And, of course, bro, you are doing something special. We've got that new single that's releasing. I cannot wait for it. Obviously, it's also a combination of that releasing and building towards that EP, I believe it's happening in 2024. Bro, this is even more exciting. I can see the look on your face. But what can we expect from this, man? Yeah, man, as I said earlier, like, it's just... Uh, Hopefully a body of work that people can resonate with, I mm. think. There's a lot of narratives that I think are very relatable. Um, but yeah, with the heavier content and, and the more introspective narrative, I think I want it to be uplifting, people to be stoked. You pop it on in your car, vibe out, you know what I mean? A lot of road trippy vibes as well, which I is nice. That, yeah. In a way, when you're driving down the highway, maybe a bit of tears <laughs> every now and then, you start really thinking about it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to have it out. So. Bro, but, but that's the one thing that I think stands out for you and your voice is that it's got this, like, honesty, this raw sort of, like, energy that comes out. And I think that's what resonates with so many people. That's why we love your music. Is there anyone from your side that you'd love to resonate with? I know we're always putting out these manifestations, these collaborations that could come in the future. Make it happen right now, bro. Put it out into the atmosphere. Put it out in the air because it will materialize. Who do you see yourself working with? Who would you love to collab with? To be honest, I'd love to work with a guy like Louis Capaldi. I think Ooh. he's been in a, I, I take a lot of inspiration from him from a songwriting point of view mm. and, and just that rawness and honesty. You know, he's, 
he likes stuffing around, like, he's very funny, um, <laughs> which is kind of, you know, I, I try not to take myself too seriously, but I think the music does, and I think he balances that world pretty well. So I think he'd be good fun to work with, good vibes, and have a lot of fun and laughter, you know? So. Yeah, I can see how the two of you would get along, and I can see how you and Zanz are gonna get along for this one, because this is it. The moment has arrived. Richard Sturton with his new single called Rough Justice. Stage is yours, bro, take it away. We went somewhere nice And I was gentle You are dear red wine While my mind was on its way And I spilled my life Over that white tablecloth Soaking, and we let it soak in. I'm sorry for asking, I just gotta know. Did your evenings add up the way you want it? Am I overthinking existential? When it rains and pours, and lately it's the rain. The depth and the emotion in the voice um, coming from me. It's not a huge amount with my level of musicality, but sounding exquisite and more from Richard on the way. Oh, how exciting. Well, we are taking the quickest of breaks when we get back. It's all about giving you all the wardrobe options you need for your next holiday. Oh, a capsule loading, I have a feeling. And then, of course, speaking of holidays, a gap year isn't a holiday. It's an opportunity to discover yourself, maybe find your true north. We're going to get into what that looks like, the practical elements, the pro the cons of taking that gap year after this. If your cooking makes you proud, then you might be Zanzi's next cooking star. To be a part of Color Your Plate with Ku on SABC2, show us how a healthier you starts with you and your tasty plate. Take a video of yourself creating a colorful meal and tell us why you should be Mzanzi's next cooking star. What's up your entry to 072-741-5357 and you could be on the new season. Plus, stand to win your share of prizes valued at 500,000 Rand. Color Your Plate with Ku.
It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back as we continue to talk education, okay, and look at it from a slightly different angle. I think many young students feel pressured to jump into it, start studying after school, stick to the plan. Graduates are then pushed to find a job, stick to the plan. And those already working feel the need to keep going without a break, stick to the plan, we can get there. But we shouldn't forget about the benefits of taking a step back, possibly taking a gap year. A certified EFL teacher with Good Hope Studies, Celeste Creel, now joins us to give some insights into the benefits and particular pros and cons of taking a gap year because we need to educate ourselves. Uh, Celeste, thanks for being here. Thank you for having um, me. I know a lot of nervous scholars out there thinking that their entire future now rests on how they're going to perform in these exams. Often that happens then they're either disillusioned or inspired by this journey, take a gap year, and their whole focus changes, which underpins the power of taking that step back. So maybe let's start with that. What could be a good reason to take a gap year? Because you're gonna have to go and motivate this to your parents, <laughs> or parents are gonna have to right. go and motivate this right. to, your, to your kids. And Absolutely. what are some of the major benefits? What's the incentive, do you think? I think what you said about it being a daunting time, mm. like you feel pressured to find the right job, get into the right company, but just taking a step back and looking at what am I curious about? What am I interested in? Um, who am I? You matriculate, you're 18, you don't really have... You um, know nothing. <laughs> Let me just say it out there as an old guy, you know nothing. Right, you think you know, but you may not. And I think a gap year just gives you the opportunity to explore yourself, perhaps explore the world and gain, gain, gain a bit of perspective on yourself yeah. and the world and just grow. And when you come back after your gap year, you just have um, a more a broader perspective of who you are and you can make the next decision from there. An informed decision. An informed on, decision. Yeah, of where you fit in. Absolutely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip this a little bit here, mm. because for me, I, I'm only meeting purpose-driven young South Africans mm. right now. And they are purpose-driven because they've seen other purpose-driven young kids on social media driving purpose, driving the why. Right. In my line of work, generally people end up on this couch because they've discovered their why after going through their entire life, having some kind of massive thing happen to them, writing a book, doing something, discovering their purpose, then starting their actual job. Right. Kids these days are starting with the why. Yeah. Could this gap year opportunity present that, present a chance to connect to the why? And why is the why so important in your experience? I'm so glad you asked that question because it feels really personal to me. Yeah. Um, I graduated from um, journalism school and I did journalism for a little bit and then I decided, hey, I want to explore the world. I'm not sure where this is going to take me, but I want to know a little bit more about myself, discover my why. And I did a SALTA course, which we offer at Good Hope Studies, and it allowed me to teach English overseas in Korea and when I was in Korea, I fell back in love with um, journalism. And I had the opportunity to work for the Korea Times writing, copy editing. Um, Talk about full circle. Full circle, wow. exactly. And so I think we think about a gap year as just um, space, but it's also a gateway to um, just opportunities that you may have never even thought about for yourself. And... I think going back to the why, um, for me, it made me fall in love with media again. And I think for other people, um, just giving them that space to experiment and see what is my why. People will change their jobs. I think the last average I heard, because it mm. seems to shift, was about five times in their career. And I think sure. that speaks to not fully understanding your mm. purpose in that space. But Absolutely. we also don't know what's coming. Right. We don't know who we are growing into through right. that process. And it's a journey. There is no right or wrong. From a company perspective, those doing the hiring, I would love to tap into someone who has their purpose better down, who knows where they're going. For me, I would far rather invest in that product than someone who is asking all the questions and hasn't connected to that. Yeah. How forward thinking are companies about this gap year notion? How does it fit into the real world? Mm -hmm. 
Well, um, I can't speak for all companies, but I know that some forward-thinking companies are kind of supporting the idea of a constructive gap year, mm. um, where they allow or encourage employees to take a, what we sort of called a sabbatical before, yeah. but in a more constructive and intentional way. Um, go do your MBA, perhaps, go do perhaps your thing, upskill, do your yeah. MBA, um, explore um, even creative endeavours and come back with a new perspective, come back with more self-confidence um, and sort of contribute that to the workplace. And come back. And come back. And come back. And I think yeah. this is what we lose, is when you lose critical human resources, it can take a company five years to recover. Right. You can't just replace like for like. But the most important element here is it's up to you. And if you're struggling to motivate this to your parents or to the structures around you, maybe you haven't hit on that why just yet. Establish that reason why you think you need to have that break to discover yourself. We've got a great roadmap to follow. And then take that step and back yourself because there is magic to be found when you're out there experiencing, living, discovering your purpose. Oh, well, listen, speaking of traveling, did someone say Santorini-inspired holiday styles? Well, Woolworths' latest collection of fun statement-making places it is ideal for your next family holiday. And here to take us through the collection that will take you from beach life to balmy nights and creative is creative director and stylist Taryn Opal. It's so great to have you here. Thank you so Oh, we are talking fashion and we're getting so excited for the holiday season. Taryn, take us through the inspiration behind this collection. Well, Zoe, if I didn't know any better, I think this collection was inspired by the last three Rugby World Cup matches because after <laughs> that, I think we need a long, stress-free holiday on a beach somewhere. Yes, we do. Um, it wasn't inspired by the box, but it was inspired by a very special place that can give you those balmy nights, which mm. is Greece. Yes. Uh, very specifically Santorini. And when I think of Santorini, I think of those bright blue roofs on those white stacked buildings, long, lazy days on the beach. Sunny um, days. Exactly. And that's exactly what you'll get from this collection. Oh, well, listen, I'm seeing a bunch of blues and beautiful whites. Yes. So let's talk through your favourite pieces. Okay, so for women, nothing more of a statement than a dress, okay? So here, yeah, we've I speak a lot about the really beautiful embroidery on dresses that you find at Woolies at the moment, and this is no different. I mean, they've taken that blue inspiration and sort of stretched that color palette over various shades of blue and put it on these white pieces. This is just another version of a really fun print, little button-up shirt dress. And let me feel that material. Can you see Such how it flows? Such easy material to wear. I'm, I'm thinking now, you know, you're going on holiday, you're packing this in a suitcase, you're not going to have time to iron. This doesn't need an iron. Roll it up. Roll it up and squeeze it in there. Go. And something like that, you know, when we think of Greece, I also want to point out the gladiator sandal because a little pop of gold in between all this blue and white will really, really make a statement. And it's so chic. And I mean, I'm wearing one of the accessories oh, you right look like now. You're ready Play to go. Oh, I'm on a holiday. <laughs> I'm not at work right now. I need this bag, and then the look is complete. And then you can go. Get on that plane and go. Be that person. I'm so another like piece a... from the collection <laughs> is actually something that I'm wearing, which is this really soft shirt nice and oversized, you can tuck it into a pair of white denims or maybe even a chino shorts if you're a shorts girl. Um, again, with your flat sandal, grab your straw bag. I'm feeling holiday, I'm getting it. Then for men, I love this shirt, it's so fun. I mean, you could wear it buttoned up, unbuttoned with a t-shirt underneath. And so first time, that's so something I can see Ryle in. Totally. I yes. thought that as well when I saw it. And then, of course, in between all of these blues and whites, these must have pop of sunny yellow. I think you're pulling it all quite well this morning as well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and we then represent of course... the sand. <laughs> and the sun. In Santorini yeah. and sun. <laughs> um, and then, of course, for men, what would Willies be without a golfer? They do those really well as well. And in so many great colours. And what I love the most about Willies is that they consider the whole family. So how do we tie this all in together? That is a with big some, question. With some things for kids. So, yeah, we've got this really cute little frill top, little matching embroidery, little frilly skirt, which I love, and you're going to see that on beautiful Kaylee in a minute. Jaylee, sorry. Um, and then for boys, also giving tropical, giving holiday, a little and tropical And you can match shirt. dad. 
You can exactly. Exactly. Oh, I love this. So I'm already, I know of a lot of families that's thinking of, you know, Christmas outfits, getting the festive season, you know, you're going to a holiday party, you want mm -hmm. the whole family to look like they're from one family. So let's bring out our models and see how we can let's put see this how that comes to life. together. Okay, so we've got Kaylin and Jaylee here. What I love about this, it's a little bit of a twinning moment with the embroidery. Jaylee in her skirt, Kaylin oh. in her dress. It's so nice to see it on body because, you know, some things don't really have much hanger appeal and then you put it on and it just takes it to a whole other level. Um, and then, of course, Kaylin's wearing her straw wedges with a straw hat. It's all about the straw. It's feeling very summery. Definitely. Very and summery. I love that there are also cute little mustard colour shoes. Got to bring in that yellow. It's all about the, it's all about the tones and uh, <laughs> bringing the look together. So they're picture ready, I think. Oh, amazing. <laughs> I love this for mom and daughter. Let's see about dad and son. It's all about the stripes. Summer stripes. We've got um, a really cute 100% so uh, sustainably sourced cotton t-shirt. The little boy, <coughs> these little yellow swim shorts, mm -hmm. and then um, I was wearing the really cool men's <coughs> golfer in a broad navy stripe with these white denims. Um, and what I love is that the blue and white really ties into your blue and white denims as well, so you can bring that in for easy wearing too. Amazing. I love that you said that there is something for the whole family. Very important. Oh, you all look incredible, Taryn. You're getting us so excited. And for you at home, you can view this collection. It is up, you know, it's the holiday collection. I'm actually going to stand up so I can be part of this family. <laughs> look, I come in with my mustard. Me too, me too. Yes, yes, yes. We are a whole family <laughs> together. And what's incredible is this collection is made up of holiday resort looks in blues and yellows and whites and a range for the whole family. Shop this resort collection at Woolworths. You can do so in store online as well as on the Woolies app. Let's go on holiday. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> holiday go. time. Wait my bag. <laughs> Oh, he's been teasing us with some amazing new music. Richard Sturton is here to perform one more time. The track Cold On Me is beautiful. If you haven't heard it yet, you're about to get an exclusive performance just for you. Stick around. Bespoke. Another feel good production. It's my feel good breakfast show. Oh, welcome back, you beauties. I, I know we are all spent. We have been trying as hard as we can to muster the emotion and the energy, but it's been difficult. I think every South African left nothing out there emotionally over oh, the weekend. We so. are so proud of our Springboks, and so are you. So let's take a look at what you had to share with us on social media. Look at the pictures Hello, coming Nunu. through from Pauline Cronier. 
Oh, you know, oh. I love I love seeing everyone in their green and gold. And the, and the joy is these little ones would have seen the players do it and they believe this one is absolutely beautiful. And Halloween, um, look at it, celebrating Book Friday, absolutely beautiful. And you've got the little ones in your color, the fact that they get it. Mm -hmm. Quibus also showing off himself and his Bok jersey, how exciting. That's what my face looked like for the whole game. I don't think I cracked a smile for Aww. the entire game. Absolutely hectic. Uh, and Lean saying in the Midlands. Um, the laser clinic. The laser clinic. The ladies getting behind the books. I think every company, every person, every sporting team, the whole world over got behind this World Cup with good reason. So I think I, I'm going to use the last few little bits of emotion that I have left yeah. to go and chat to Richard and see if he can calm my nerves. Oh, well, listen, <laughs> we love celebrating with the box. Our Good Morning Post is there. So if you've got pictures that you would love to share with our family, do so online. You can even WhatsApp them to 063-408-8863. Thinking so intently about his amazing future. We are so happy to have Richard Sturton back in the country. He's got new music and a whole new vibe, bro. Oh. Um, the voice is sounding spectacular. Thank you. I, I can feel how much, I'm not the most musical person, but, but there are some moments there where it feels different, mm -hmm. which is beautiful, dude. I didn't think you could take that further, but clearly you've worked on the craft as much as the sound, which is beautiful, man. You talk about this new version of yourself moving forward that is really reflective of who you are as a person. How does that come out in the EP? You're obviously mastering it at the moment. Are you terrified to release new music now, or is it exciting? How does it feel? Yeah, I think I'm just buzzed, eh? Because when I used to tour, people would come to me, oh, I love track number six. What's <laughs> it about? I'd be like, I didn't write it. So, you know, unfortunately, we had three weeks to produce that album, and as I said, I didn't have a lot of say in the actual writing. And I think for me, I'm just really excited to be speaking about things that I'm thinking about, you know? And yeah. you talk about authenticity and connection, and that's kind of the space that I'm wanting to sit in. So to be honest, I'm just so excited. The topics are a little bit more introspective. Yeah. You know, it's a lot about relationships because I think I always, you know, live by that saying, we're nothing without each other, nothing without oh, people. Sure. So I think it's always um, in the forefront of my mind. And I think that's what comes through in the, in the music. But in a way, I hope that it's uplifting because I think when I was speaking to um, Jack Bowden, and the guys producing my album, we were like, yeah. sonically, we want to go to a place where people are crying, but dancing while they do, you know? So it's uplifting and vibey, but you, you know, Sometimes. That's the South African way, bro. That, yeah. that really is the South African way. Yeah. Well, the world maybe is getting a taste of the duality that we've all grown up with. That's crazy where it's like all or nothing all the time. The stakes are so high. The emotions are, are really hectic. You get to process, like we were saying, going through this journey, which is a beautiful thing. And it kind of feels like you're in a good mental space. Yeah. Um, that being said, you've got to take yourself to those vulnerable spaces when you create music. When we look at a song, Cold On Me, just the title yeah. evokes goosebumps because I know where it's coming from. But for you, what informed this creation? So it wasn't actually a relationship of mine. It was I often like putting myself in other, other people's relationships. And there was someone close to me who was in a relationship. And the, the woman he was with came in hot. Like she was really excited in the beginning of the relationship. And you know, she didn't fully show her for herself and what have you. And then, um, yeah, after a while, the true colors, you know, came through. And unfortunately, they're no longer together. Well, probably better. For the for, better, for yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was just about, you know, that the fact that sometimes it's, it's surface level. Yeah. And that's what it's about. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's, it's got quite a vibe. So if there's anybody there who's been uh, heartbroken uh, and uh, messed around a bit and someone that's given uh, you know, false advertising at the beginning of the relationship, then this is for you. Um, it's called Cold On Me. So. Oh, I have a feeling this is going to be sent on to a few people today. I'm going to send you on to our beautiful Thank little you. stage Thank there. Um, I love the fact that we are being able to plug into where Richard is right now in his own journey. But also, as I said earlier, he's giving us the emotional tools, the language to be able to apply it in our own space. So if you've been hard done by, if you have fallen victim to this exact relationship mechanism, I can, first of all, send you lots of love right now, but I think this is going to be an opportunity for you to do some processing as Richard Sturton performs Cold On Me. Take it away. They don't bleed, but they run deep, and you've been running. 
done Your heart, it was changing Were you just trusting your gut? Or maybe I didn't cut it When you got to the detail And it's been cutting, 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 cutting me up Be like warm water That doesn't run deep Didn't take your love long to go cold on me He like warm water That doesn't run deep Did it take your love long To go cold on me He went cold 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 on me He went cold can be the cold white lies I told myself so I could make it through the night Whoa, uh, never feel good production me.